knew it would be back to reassure me. YouTube gave an error message, which means we can be certain we are live. But according oh. to YouTube, you're not. No, according to YouTube, I am. It's just according to YouTube's side with my streaming control room, it says it has no idea what's going on right now. So, hello, I'm my well, I'm Shout out to the personality best here, and welcome to Live and Wired, episode 66. What the hell is lucky this one? <laughs> You are indeed live. We are live. Yeah, we can hear ourselves. Okay. okay, there's the title. Clown Time and Space. Yay! Joining, as always, we have that long-haired creepy guy. Legs. And his legs of joy. I have no idea how that became a meme on this show, but it has. We have... Put, uh, cat. 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 You are indeed right. Greetings, foolish mortals. Tis I, Cat, not Patricia. And our special guest, who you may recognize from episode four of Live and Wired. I don't know what else he's been in, but John Massari. Massari, Massari. Yeah, you, you, I like the way you, you, you attempt the Italian. Now, someone yeah. has their YouTube up running right now. Uh, I don't know. Not yeah, because I, I had to turn my volume off on my YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I can still hear the, the playback. Yeah. Hold on. Everything's haunted. <laughs> well, We're being haunted by our past. I don't want to be haunted by that one more scream sequel. No. <laughs> so, uh, Wybie Lovett says greetings from Poland. Hello, Wybie. Yeah, I hope I pronounced that right. I generally don't pronounce things right. Yeah. I have my YouTube shut up, by the way. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah, I do not see any kind of thing on my YouTube oh, going. So. Hold on. Mute. Hmm. <laughs> like, I hear that coming in from, from Discord, so it's definitely coming from somewhere. Yeah. Not from me. Yeah, it's not for me. I just closed my all my entire browser, just for the record. You know. Yeah, same here. My browser's off. Yeah. It's haunted. I'm going to track down this one way or the other. <laughs> uh, Lone Dragon says, tell Patricia we miss her. And that is uh, another thing to mention, is today is actually Patricia's birthday. Patricia was born today. Yeah, Not exactly yeah, today, but yes. Yeah, same here. My browser's off. I think it's coming from John Macari. <laughs> feels like it feels like we are. No, my browsers are off also as well. Mine are off. Uh, Mine's off. Decker, is that you? No, I see it flashing on your the the little audio cues <laughs> flashing on your side, creepy. But you said you turned your browser off. Yeah, my browser is shut down completely. <sighs> fun, fun, fun. Okay, control out the lead. It's actually closed. It feels like we are. No, my browser So, yeah, I have no sound calls from any of the other things. <laughs> ah, everything is driving me nuts. <laughs> this is wonderful... There's another group of people talking at the next table. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a wonderful stream. Just a wonderful, like, here on Live and Wired, we don't know what technical difficulties are. <laughs> So, ah, yeah, uh, yes, uh, let, we can just get started on the actual topics of things. <laughs> As you know, this is John Massari. He is a legendary Hollywood composer. Um, someone recommended that we should each mute ourselves one by one until we find it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So. So, who goes first? I muted myself for a bit there. Yeah, I muted. I'll go. I'll go next. As you know, this is John Massari. He is a legendary Hollywood composer. Um, someone recommended that it didn't go like this in the first one. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh we found it. Ah. Uh. Uh, Teddy Rupskin is in the audience right now, saying hello. Oh, hello, Teddy. Hello. He's been having troubles with his channel recently. Got a, so I've been trying to keep it, keep an eye on him because it looks like he might lose his channel soon, according to what YouTube sent him as a message. But they also told him he was going to lose his channel two days ago, and as of yet, he has not. Why would he lose his channel? 
three copyright strikes. But it still hasn't gone through as far as I can tell, so I'm trying to keep an eye on things there. Yeah. Uh, cat. So this is interesting, because I think we all muted once and... Cat just muted her microphone and it didn't do anything. So yeah, it's muted right there. Well, I mean, it's not muted to the guys at home, but it's muted there. You can see it right there. But it still hasn't gone through as far as I can tell, so I try to keep an eye on things there. I think it's either creepy... No, it's John Masari. <laughs> okay, I unmuted myself to you. Okay. Man has so, am, I on, am I doing something on uh, Discord? Because my browser is off. Browser's off. See, that's the thing that's confusing me. Yeah, because so if much. it was just it was just feedback from our mics, and because he's not wearing headphones or anything and stuff like that, that would explain it. But it's us thirty seconds in the past. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like the stream playing from somewhere. Oh, fun, fun, fun. So, just like 2020, the stream has gone to a wonderful start. <laughs> okay, well, we're seven minutes in and we haven't talked about an actual topic yet. So, <laughs> what, if, what if I what if I hang up and come back in? Try that. We can try, try that. that. We can try that. It's okay, all Oh, the sound of silence. Oh, my God. <laughs> These are the sounds of silence. Actually, they're the sounds of you singing. Shh. Shh. Okay, so. Stop uh, trying to give me the finger. We do wrong have finger. things to talk about. Uh, should we get John Masari back on, or is he just trying no, to Let's really quickly go through the news while he's gone. All right, let's go for that. <laughs> uh, we, should, we, should, we should wait for him. Check out what's yeah. what's the chat talking about other than oh dear god the uh it's on like, fire. Doctor, um, Dr. Zippy McScoot says goddamn YouTube. <laughs> uh someone has a tab open with live and wire volume up. I have the pop out chat out and I closed the actual stream for reasons yeah. of this. Um Would killer clowns oh, from outer space accept Pennywise into their group? Technically Pennywise is from outer space. But he is not a killer clown. He doesn't. He's not portray that a specific. Race they would get mad of because of cultural space clowns. It is mm -hmm. a strange eldritch abomination. Mm -hmm. so. Something, something, cultural appropriation. Killer clown. The outer space clowns would be mad at Pennywise. True. Yeah, he, that is just a face he's putting on, after all. Yes, he's just. The, the killer clowns just, from outer space are clowns. From outer space. Yes. Uh, John Masari is blinking. Is sort of back in the call connecting um, that's the word so someone just said okay. that creepy is wearing a very nice hat because once again the lampshade looks like a hat <laughs> <laughs> okay so john everything okay can you hear me oh yes i can hear you and i don't okay. hear live and wired in the background anymore what do you do? or do we no let's find out no, I don't. Voice. It's like I can't do. I, I'm, 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 I'm paranoid. Paranoid. <laughs> paranoia. The people are passing no longer haunting us. But yes, oh. there, there is a good reason for John Masari to be here, and it's not just that he is such good awesome. friends. <laughs> He's not just a good friend who would die for us. <laughs> Some stipulations may apply, but. I was about to say. <laughs> but the twenty uh, seventh of this month is the thirty second anniversary of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and this is the twenty third. Twenty three mm -hmm. is thirty two backwards. It all makes sense, really. Right. It went all numerology on us. No, well, this actually, actually makes perfect sense in Decker Land. <laughs> but no, thirty years ago is when it came out in the theaters here in L.A. Ah. And then the week after that, it released uh, nationwide. But the premiere, supposedly, was um, it, it was at the Egyptian Theater. Okay. So we are we are here oh, today. Thank you for putting me on your on, on your show. Uh, we have a five dollar donation by the Singing Chef. 
of saying Killer Clowns is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> oh yeah, it's thank you so much. It, it, it's one that like when I saw it when I was really really young and really should not have been seeing it. It still left an impression, but not necessarily a negative one. <laughs> It was, it was one where I'm like, you know, when I get older, I'm going to have to track that one down and find out what the hell that was. <laughs> I remember... Like, Decker went on to review horror movies and, and do a review show where he talks about and uh, he gets a boner every time that uh, the body count goes up. But no, this, <laughs> this didn't have any kind of negative impact on it. No, all. no. <sighs> Though I do kind of get a little uh, personally confused when I hear one of my own fans telling me that they've been watching my show since they were young. I'm like, what the hell have you been doing? No, don't do that. I felt, <laughs> I felt the same way. Like, someone was like, I was eight years old when I saw this video, now I'm this year old. I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got you all beat. I got you all beat. I got people coming up to me and says, you know, I finally introduced my grandchildren to Killer Clown from Outer Space. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's what that's my hell. That's my hell. <laughs> and you're like, what did your grandchildren do to you to deserve that? <laughs> well, it's a good movie. It's just, I don't know I if, love, like, love, well, personally, from my perspective, eight is a bit young for killer clowns from outer space. I mean, yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Masadi, uh, did I do yes. it right? Did I did I do it right? Masari, you can it's like I, I, I'm sorry with an M. Okay. Masari. I'm sorry. Masari. Masari is fine. Yeah. All right. And, um, and you have to speak Italian to say it absolutely perfectly right, but Masari is absolutely perfect. Okay, okay. one eight Italian blood, get to work. Help me be able to pronounce Italian things now. <laughs> okay, fine. I uh, I did something to wor I did something worse to Decker though than showing. Uh, Grandchildren Killer Clowns. I had him watch uh, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, Ugh. and we had you, to review it together. <laughs> you monster. Uh, that, you like, monster. I like how we had the three different perspectives in that review, where me, someone who generally didn't watch Power Rangers, you, someone who has watched Power Rangers, but mm -hmm. doesn't have the largest investment in it, and Chippy Thulu, who very much had a large investment in Power Rangers, and we can all come together and agree that something's seriously wrong with that movie. <laughs> I remember watching the review, and I'm well, sitting here going, We should get back on topic. Aww. Well, we should. There are specific topics at hand. Uh, True. Good point. On, on the uh, news front with Killer Clowns from Outer Space, we do have a little bit to talk about with uh, Funko Funkoween is going to be uh, they originally showed off the killer clowns from outer space funko figures at the london toy fair but they are now up for pre-order on entertainmentearth.com so if i can place. really quickly copy and paste that link down into uh both wine on twitch says i saw these they look really good hmm. Yeah, and uh, it should be it should be noted that uh, back in January we were planning with Funko to have an event this month with uh, the cast and crew and myself for a, a really fun signing at the uh, Hollywood Funko, but that never materialized because, because shortly after January we had this uh, pandemic play. thing rise and. If if I can help it by by Christmas, if nothing happens, I'm gonna book Funko Hollywood myself and invite everyone to come and hang out, even if they don't buy it. Well, it'd be great if they did buy some Funko products, but uh, that, that, that does. definitely they have a they, Funko Hollywood is like a mini Disneyland. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a must see place once you come to Hollywood. That's for sure. Uh, Lone Dragon asks uh, normal action figures too. I hate those stupid big head things. And, you know, Funkin, Fun Funko Pops, they're very popular right now, but at the same time, it's like, I understand, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I see a lot of things mm -hmm. come out in Funko Pops, and I don't feel the most enthused, personally, to go out mm -hmm. for Funkos. But then again, if I had a Funko of myself, I'd be telling everyone about it. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of have, like have those. Um, they kind of have those now, no, don't they? With not, the, uh, not, not at all, not at all. <laughs> no, not, no, not at all. I have two more, and they're both Harley Quinn, and I can't find them right now. <laughs> so, 
I and, saw that, and thus we have Cat's live breakdown over Funko Pops. No, 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 no. I actually can explain why Funko Pops are so mass spread. I actually know the business. Okay, okay so hold on. I'm just putting these away. So um, Funko Pops are a really great starter collect collector's items for fans because one, they're cheap. And like a lot of figures, especially in, yes, especially, nice. especially in the land of anime and video games are like a couple hundred dollars if you want the good ones. There's some good mid-range now, but back in the day when Funko was starting, there was like, it was only a couple hundred dollars. Even the sexy anime girl ones. And so like Funko was like, hey, we're gonna offer this. And you know, they did the best bids and they were able to sell it and they just went, they had connections and mm -hmm. while yes funko is not loved by all it did cause like competition the, <laughs> it did cause competition within the figure making race to actually make mid-range like i've seen some really good figures that are only 30 dollars now so it's actually caused competition so it, no, they also have the youtuber ish funko pop style things what are they called tubies yeah we don't talk mm -hmm. about tubies <laughs> yeah, but if I had a Tubi, I'd be telling everyone to buy my Tubi. <laughs> it sounds like you want everyone to buy something that is not YouTube appropriate. <laughs> Very true. But that's Decker on the yeah, Tuesday. It, 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 so it's fun, Funko Pops aren't the only kinds of merch. There's also there's, there's a I have a lovely, lovely Twitter poll to ask the viewers what kind of merch, what kind of hypothetical. Killer Clowns from Outer Space merch, would you be most interested in buying, if not Funko Pops? Let's ask here. Uh, we have the 80s effects clown ray gun. There's the clown suit cosplay set. The circus tent spaceship toy and the cotton candy with gushers. That's on Twitter, at DeckerShadow, 30 minutes starting now. Uh, we'll be sharing the link out to the chat in just a second. Yeah, cat stood up, and I'm like, "Holy crap! Everyone is leaving this, just uh, walking out of the wild." I house. brought up the Twitter poll, oh, and that's no. it. Like, no one's interested anymore. Like, Especially guests no, got no. up and left. It's... No, no, no. I was just looking for my Funkos. This is this is the one. This is my very first Funko I ever bought at a uh, Bartow Sci-Fi Fair yeah, many yeah. years ago. And this one, a friend gave me because they knew I was a big Harley fan. Ah, yes. I... This one hurts. Yeah, I actually have a signed head. copy of that. What? The Killer Clowns from Outer Space soundtrack. Oh. Yeah, now you, sh you should have one. Why don't you have one? I do. Is it? Oh, you do? Good. <laughs> Excellent. At, oh, it's, it's over I, there with I, my other... Did I sign, the, um, sign it with the music manuscript on it? Yes. Oh, good. Because <laughs> uh, that's a customized deal. Uh, Anthony Hudak has a question for John Masari. Saying, yes. quick question, do the killer clowns from outer space consider Pennywise a hypocrite? I think this is more of a question for the Kyoto brothers, but, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, it's a different universe. However, I'm surprised no one's asked the big question. No one's addressed the elephant in the room. There's an elephant in the room? There's yeah. always an elephant in the room. No one's addressed the, the subject of a sequel. Amazing. Usually well, they, they were asking that before the stream started. <laughs> yeah. So oh. they all got the <laughs> All right. Ah! Oh, but you're, but you're full. What's going on? Oh, thanks so much. Like Funko Pop. No, did not get killed by Funko Pop. Thank you very much. Oh, well, you got attacked by oh. Scott Steep, apparently. No, I got attacked for by those, a package. For those of you that weren't connected to the stream, beforehand uh if you want to know something about the sequel just contact me yeah. through my social media so anyways so uh so what else are we doing guys because uh, uncle john's got homework to do still I, I actually i actually you know it's interesting that you know you're reviewing the wizard of speed and time oh yeah <clears throat> because i did that movie a um an outfit in japan uh, an agency, an advertising agency, had me doing music specifically in that style for their commercial. I just finished <laughs> that like last week, which oh, was interesting because the director was a big fan of the Wizard of Speed and Time. Which is which really interesting because I was doing, I've, I've been doing you know a fair amount of research trying to. Mm. Ah. Ooh, and okay, wait a minute for the ah. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. And... Oh, yeah. No, that's good. Ooh, this is the ooh. 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 And then. Uh, Not oh. yet. <laughs> Learn your timing. Uh, uh, anyway, so are you very doing nice looking at the same time? <clears throat> yes. But yeah, I've been, I've been uh, doing my bits of research on the Wizard of Speed and Time, and of course, the uh, 1988 movie was uh, sort of extrapolated from the 1979 shorts mm -hmm. that was produced for Disney, for the yes. uh, Magical World of Disney special effects spectacles. I don't remember what it was called. Lots of words yeah, involving was a, it was Disney a, and special effects. It was, it was, a, it was a Sunday Sunday night movie special about special effects uh -huh. in film. So the, the Wizard of Speed and Time movie is kind of semi-autobiographical. It's like, it's f it's f fantastical in a way, but a lot of the things that happen are based on real events. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, digging around, I found some people in comments talking about some uh, interviews <laughs> that Mike had apparently given in regards to the uh, lip syncing in the short of the Wizard of Speed and Time mm -hmm. in the Wizard of Speed and Time movie, where the uh, it, studio execs are just freaking out, but he's lip syncing, mm -hmm. which at the time also is arguably the first time someone had done stop motion lip sync. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was very. It, 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 here, here is the the purpose for that, is that we wanted to do music our own music for that little special because basically what they said here do something with a dancing wizard or you know if it lasts for a minute that's fine we'll, we'll make some music to it so mike said hey let's just make our own music we'll write a little song i'll lip sync it so it's married to the picture and they'll just have to use it and so what they did is they they said uh oh, they reluctantly said oh that's not what we wanted but okay we'll just license the song from you so that's what that, that's how that happened it wasn't it was in the movie they make it a dramatic disaster it in reality, it was some something of a pleasant surprise, although they didn't appreciate the fact that they didn't, there was no pre-approval. Because when you're working for a, a company that the, the sun does not shine, does not set upon, which is Disney, which was still an international company even back then, um, you know, you, there's just ways you do things. You, you, you hmm. present an idea and you, you get approval for it and everyone's on board with it and you, and you do it. You, it's not really a good practice to do things under the table. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it starting filmmakers. Yeah. Uh, oh, we have some interesting messages. Uh, Lone Dragon goes, Decker, please tell Mr. Masari it is customary for any cats he may, ha he may have to cam camo on the s in the stream. <laughs> it's a weird tradition we have. And also Singing Chef donated $10 going, I love all you guys, all your all your guys' videos and killer clowns from outer space is an amazing movie and it's truly such a good movie, even though it has it's it has a fair share of criticism. I can't read well out loud apparently today. <laughs> uh, so uh, Valentine's Tube asks a uh, question for John. I am writing my own yeah. radio plays and I was wondering, did you have to make character sheets for the clowns? Though he's a composer. Okay. <laughs> now you have to understand I'm not the filmmaker. Uh, I, I didn't make the character sheets. That's all the work, the creative work of the Kyoto brothers. The Kyoto brothers, uh, for months and months, did a lot of concept art for the movie that they have a collection of. And I believe that they, when they, when you, when you go see them at conventions, they have reproductions of that uh, conception art. But uh, yeah, that was all. That's all out of the mind of the Kyoto brothers. And as far as the character of each clown, they didn't have a name. Uh, the fans actually, I believe, over the years have have uh, adopted names for all the characters. Oh. Uh, like Spiky and Punchy, was it? Or Shorty? Shorty. Uh, Shorty. Shorty was the only one that, you know, I have the script. I, I, and I, I actually never read it. And, and I breezed through it like a year ago. And I didn't see any, like, I didn't see Spike or Rudy or... Uh, Jumbo or all the names that they have. Uh, Shorty, I think, was the only one because the um, uh, the biker gang guy calls the little clown Shorty. Hey, Shorty! And so that kind of stuck there. So, 
I used to call call the giant clown at the near the end Clownzilla. A lot of people refer to them as Clownzilla. Oh, a lot of people yeah, yeah. do. I didn't know that when I first started. The band. Did you, did you go to HHN last year? Me? Uh, no. Yeah, back in October. Oh, okay, because they had a reproduction of Clownzilla that was just <sighs> mind boggling. I wanted to. I would love to have gone to Universal, but there's this thing, you know, the blah, blah, blah makes the world evil, blah, blah, blah. Money. Uh, yeah. that, that does remind well, me. Um, I'm wondering, because you see, to... Halloween Horror Nights from their website is still saying that Killer Clowns from Outer Space as a maze and an, an attraction is there for Halloween Horror Nights, but it was everything was marked 2019 as well, so I'm like, okay, is this still going mm -hmm. forward, or yeah. is it just a one-year deal, and then you tear it down? I mean, well, what happened? Yeah, well, oh, sorry. I had a, uh, I had a uh, uh, dinner with the uh, creative, uh, uh, head of creative development at uh, HHN. His name is Michael Aiello, and it was his all of his efforts over years to try to get Killer Clowns as uh, a scare zone and then a house, and. Um, so it was basically a labor of love. It was it was uh, made by a fan for fans, which was really so awesome. Anyways, he he um, he's the one that came up with the idea that he wanted to recreate a giant clownzilla at the end for mm -hmm. everyone. So that was uh, that was his brainchild. So I need that giant clownzilla and put it on my front yard for reasons. Yeah, yeah. what I like is the fact that because it's a marionette, you can actually give it a proper suspension to hold it up, and it would still work. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and Lone Dragon asks, "What are you gonna do with those those pies, boys?" That's right. That's Is it wrong right. that when I was watching all those pies get destroyed, I was like, "Oh no, it's all fruit pies!" No, no. <laughs> you know, Doctor, something just occurred to me. You came uh, the year of that I put on the concert, the 30th anniversary concert where we performed the score live with the, the Hollywood Chamber Orchestra and the Dickies, and we had sellout uh, audience. It was so awesome. I was wondering, why did you come two months before and not for the concert? Because that would have been cool yeah. to have you at the concert. Because it was cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would have gotten free tickets, but the you know you would have had that... I don't know. There was a reason like, why I wasn't you driving to come yet, so I was always getting airplane tickets. But I, I really like driving, especially distance. I don't know what's wrong with me. No, that's yeah. normal. It's like, there are I'm, a lot I'm, of I mentioned like that I like lawn. mowing the lawn, and now I'm mowing the lawn like every day because the lawn is gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> so, Decker, have you decided to put in crop circles in your backyard just to fool, make have fun with the you know Google views? Ah, my backyard's a forest. It's not going to work out too well. Actually, there's Front a big yard. field in it, so maybe. I could, I could do something with that field. Mm. Uh, I could, I could try and. Oh, man, looks like we're out of light. Just out of curiosity, are you able to do? Uh, are you able to do a lightning round of questions with your subscribers? Okay, guys in the chats, lightning round of questions. Any big questions for John Masari? Go 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 go! Come on, come on, come on. Anyway, uh, John Raxi says, is it wrong I want to get a 20-foot Chucky statue and put it in creepy front yard lawn? They have a 10-inch one. Yeah, with, uh, I have to buy first. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He... Well, Although... what's even creepier than that is that someone knows where you live. Uh, John Washburn <laughs> just says that John did the Wonderful World of Disney theme. Yes, I did that too. Oh! oh. I remember that I remember theme. part of my childhood, if I think about it deeply yeah. enough. Well, there's there's many permutations of the Holly, uh, of the um, wonderful world of Disney theme, and I had done one of them. As a matter of fact, I did it. I did it about eight months before I did Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And uh, I remember my grandmother was alive at the time. I used to always play her my music. And when I finished uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I played her the the theme where uh, my, you know Mike and Debbie come up to the um, the tent for the first time and it's kind of mysterious and colorful and she was listening to the music and she says oh my goodness this is so beautiful what is what is this movie i says well, grandma it's called killer clowns from outer space she was absolutely appalled wait a minute how do you go from doing the wonderful world of disney to a movie called killer clowns from outer space well it's a it's a fun movie grandma you'd have to be you'd have to you'd, you'd have to be you have to appreciate it for that but uh, yeah, I did the wonderful world of Disney. I did a lot of things for Disney, as a matter of fact, uh, um, uh, and that, that's a lot of fun. 
We're getting a lot of questions now. A lot of them are production questions. <laughs> okay, go for it. I, I just uh, happen to know something about that. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, they're writing quickly. Uh, one person goes, serious question, who is John Masari? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's a legendary, legendary Hollywood composer. He's legendary. And something fell down, and I must pick it up. Ah, okay. Um, how long did it take to make each clown? That was from Spicy Chip 205. Uh, the, uh, it was in the movie was in production for probably uh, probably nine months. Okay. Um, so it took a while. Other than Killer Clowns from Outer Space, what is your favorite horror theme? Oh uh, well, I did um, uh, Retro Puppet Master. That was a lot of fun. Retro that was Puppet a, Master. A, a weird, Retro Puppet Master. That was a, a weird experience working for that con company, yeah. but yeah. luckily Full I was moon. working for. One of my favorite friends, uh, Gabe Dakota, he directed that movie, and that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. That, that I did that in a quick sixteen days, and it was just like, you know, sometimes you get in a creative vein where you just like start and go till you finish, and that's exactly okay. what happened. And literally, I, I delivered it everything on the last day, and uh, you know, there, there's something to be said about the. Um, there's a high you get when, when you work on something and you finish it and it works and it's done. And then you can say to yourself, well, I'm ready to do that again on something else, you know? So that was one of those experiences where I was basically called in. So listen, you got to do this movie. We, we don't want anyone else to do it, but you. And uh, it was just a blast. It was a lot of fun. That, that just reminds me of the, just thinking of this, the, Ah, pre-production and script and planning I'm doing for the Wizard of Speed and Time review. And it's just something about mm -hmm. that movie feels inspirational. I don't You're know. Oh, yeah. It's like when I when I was when I was a teenager, I actually did a lot of stop motion myself, and I'm thinking, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I I don't know. It, it'd take a little bit of time, but I feel like <laughs> just trying my hand at doing a little stop motion segment for the review. I feel like I got a lot better stuff now to actually pull something like that off. Anyway. So, oh, Doctor, you're great. I think that Wizard of Speed and Time is due for a, a restoration to go. Oh, absolutely. The uh, the movie is and free the, on YouTube, uh, and I hear yeah, that's, that's with like permission a, from Mike. Four eighty. That's a four eighty transfer. Yeah, but and it's like all all it the things. All I, I'm just looking at the movie. It's like I have it on VHS. I'm looking at it on YouTube in four eighty p, and I'm just seeing all of the clutter all the little things all of the little mechanics going back and forth and i'm like yeah why is this not in at least hd if not 4k <laughs> this oh, begs absolutely. to and, be and sharp I, I, I know and beautiful the, um, i know the director very well and i and i i told him listen we did a, a crowdfunding to get uh the fu the funding to do the soundtrack uh, restoration of the soundtrack i'm sure people would come out in droves to support the um uh, you know the restoration of the film, and he he has something. Some there's some people that have the wrong impression of what Indiegogo is. They don't realize it's a it's a, it's an entrepreneurial website. If you know you you get like-minded people in a community that want to support a project from from conception to completion, mm. and it's not like they're running away with their money. I said, for example, when we did this, we raised the money. We uh, I, I got a vinyl pressing plant to press it. I got artists to to put this together. Well, Mike Jetlove touched up the art too. We did, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, setup design. I did all the remastering myself, and then we were able to present this to the supporters. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And I think Mike thinks that he feels that he's borrowing money. Perhaps, perhaps he thinks he he doesn't know if he can finish it. I, I don't know. You know, we're 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 trying to uh, work with him on that uh, respect. But there's a lot of people that love that movie, love the spirit of that movie. Um, that uh, you know, that you know, no matter how how the odds are stacked against you, with perseverance and the help from friends, you can get uh, things accomplished and something wonderful things accomplished. And I and think you that's can get John Masari to body. act as a guy making terrible pizzas. <laughs> Oh. Right. Um, so, would, anyway, uh, so that's, that's the 
speed and time. So who's the, who else we got there? We got uh, a C from Cinema from right. Cinema Reaper Reviews is asking what was the process of making the Killer Clown soundtrack like? Um, oh, the, the reimagined one? Oh, that was a lot of fun because I actually had all my sketches and uh, I had uh, uh, Ryan Wyman, who's an, an incredible keyboard uh, player who resequenced everything for me in, back into MIDI. From that, I was able to reorchestrate it and uh, we had a, a live orchestra perform it. You, you can see it on, on my YouTube and you just do a, a search of recording session for reimagined killer clowns and you see all kinds of uh, behind the scene footage. So that was, it was just a wonderful experience to finally hear all that music that was, we had done for um, synthesizers played back by an orchestra was just mind blowing because when we did the original score, the Kyoto Brothers says we love orchestral, big orchestral scores of the great Hollywood era. However, for this movie, we want it to sound really bizarre. So you've got to use synthesizers. So the, even though we did an electronica score, it was uh, greatly influenced by basically classical music. Hey, you, you thought the clown march gave you goosebumps before. It does. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, there's a six-minute version of oh, the yeah. clown march. Now. It tells a whole story if you listen for it. And guess, who, guess who got to hear the killer clown march when it was just recorded and mix. Guess who got to hear it for the first time besides me? Jesus. Decker, Close enough. Almost. Close the guy enough. that looks like Jesus, Decker Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Decker was there. I go, Decker, I just finished this. You want to listen to it? So I let, I played it and I left him alone. And then he had this 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 impression started coming up. Very, uh, very uh, expressive um, uh, reflections of what he thought the music was like, and, and I thought that was awesome. That's uh, good. It's right. always good. Kay Joan <laughs> says it's a crime that Killer Clowns from Outer Space doesn't have at least three sequels. I'm thinking that's actually a bit much. Like, yeah. At that point, yeah. we'd probably get to the point where you'd say this is where Killer Clowns from Outer Space stop being good. We are at the yeah, point yeah, where it's exactly. all good. Another no, sequel, we like I agree. it. You have to. You have to. It have to be like some. It have to be a reason for the story to continue, like in a series or something. But at least one sequel. You're absolutely correct. And I would recommend to all of you that love this little movie, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The intellectual property holder is MGM, and it's a publicly traded company. And they have a website. They have a contact uh, 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 portal on their website, and you can express all your love to them. And uh, I'm. I do know that they are aware of the fan love for the movie, and uh, you know, especially, you know, we had the two incarnations at Hollywood Horror Night in both Orlando and in Hollywood. So, mm -hmm. but to hear it from the fans themselves, that's that's gold. Yeah. Although I am hearing at, hearing that question in my head, I'm like going through what all the titles of Killer Clown sequels would be. Killer Clowns from Outer Space 2, The Second Clowning, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, The Final Pie in the Face, Killer Clowns from Outer Space 4, This Again. I always like well, the, I can, the title I see, I The Return the, of the Killer Clowns the, from Outer Space in 3D. Killer Clowns from Outer Space well, in Space. I, I can tell you this, that the Kyoto Brothers have a plan for this story. Ooh, so, a plan. Uh, low drag they, They've had some time work to work on it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Lone Dragon asks, would you ever work with Weird Al Yankovic? <laughs> or have um, you? Well, wait a minute. If it's a choice between Weird Al Yankovic and Decker Shadow, I'm I'm very loyal to Decker. I'll work with Decker. <laughs> well, and Decker Shadow looks like Weird Al. Have, I, actually, hopefully have Weird Al would be Weird okay Al. with just shared time. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say, no, John is my friend. Only mine. <laughs> Do not look at him. Do not even look. Do not think. He, he does not exist to you. Oh, boy. But there was also a question about if you had any... Uh, what gave you inspiration for the... Yeah, the... Ins are, were there any inspirations for the score for Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Yes. Yes, it, it was. I, I do a process when I when I see a scene that I really like. When, well, when I auditioned for the movie, I picked a particular scene that was kind of the cornerstone for the whole movie. 
it's when Mike and Debbie go into the um, into the circus tent and they encounter clowns. There's a chase. They they escape. Uh, the we've been introduced to the clowns. We know that they're it's not a circus or space aliens, and they converge on the town. Right there, there's a lot going on. So what I usually do is uh, I see the movie several times, you know, back and forth. I, I even speed up the tape and watch it backwards. Then I just think. I think about what I want to hear. And sometimes I go to the classical repertory and listen to pieces of music to give me kind of direction on where to go. And then I just sit at the piano and start tink tinkering away, making notes. And then I just write pieces of music and then play them up against picture. And whatever works the best, I keep those spots. And then I start constructing the composition that way. Now, the one thing that was written years before was the Killer Clown March at the very, you know, when the, the clowns march onto the, uh, onto Crescent Cove. That was written with my band Crisis. And they didn't like that song because it sounded too jazzy. And so I said, well, here's the perfect opportunity to use that song. It, that, I had written that Killer Clown March probably 12 years earlier. <laughs> so that's the process I, I go. It's just basically, you know, the way you start anything and, and is just... In, in the movie, started. it has, like, less than a minute. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, the kill, they're, they're, the and, kill... And it still appears, left such an well, impact. It's, it's, a, it's a motif that appears everywhere in, in various forms, but as far as a, a, a march, there's basically two spots, one where they're getting pizza and a, a one... Uh, no, no, three spots. One where they're going on the town where the pizza guy... You know, there's that montage where the it pops out of the pizza, and then at the uh, oh, yeah. at the end where they after they throw the pies, right? Oh, so yeah, those yeah. are the three spots where where it's used. But in the album, we've done a six minute version, which is which is a ton of fun to do. Uh, Monster King, when killer clowns in Tokyo have clownzilla fight Ultraman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was that a is, question. Uh, that is not as hard for me to picture as you might think. Other than, yeah. other than Clown killer Clown clowns Clown from Clown. outer space. So I was asking Clown. if John Masari had any other guilty pleasure kind of movies. But I'm wondering, like, would killer clowns be a guilty pleasure? I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> I mean, it's a guilty pleasure is supposed to be something that you enjoy once in a while. And yeah, it might not be quote unquote good for you, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of I, I. I I equate it to like comfort food. Yeah. You know, sometimes people get to put it on as a stress reliever. I mean, I mean, outside of seeing it as many times I had to see it while I was working on it, I haven't seen it that many times, like since then. And of course, when I was doing my concert, I was practicing conducting the movie. I would have my score every day. I would just do it. I would go through the show once and conduct so that when I did the concert, it was like, it was just very, nat everything was very natural. It was very familiar with everything. As a matter of fact, there's sometimes I didn't even have to look at the score. And it's a good thing I didn't have to look, get a chance to look at the score because I brought the wrong reading glasses at, to the concert. So when I was looking down, it was a giant blur. And, and like what I thought was bar 93 was probably actually uh, bar 63, you know? And so I wasn't, I, so I just went by the sound of the music when I was conducting. And, and it, miraculously, it worked out without a hitch. Luckily, I had like one of the best groups of musicians that you could possibly have uh, perform the score. There's also a question a while back. I have no idea who said it because I lost it. But uh, one person was asking, why exactly is it that the clown's nose is their weak yeah. point? And I think that's that's just down to the concept of oh, killer on. clowns. Oh, I, can where... I can tell you. I can tell you. Hold on a second. I, you know, I'm glad you, well, I guess this has been asking. I'm glad, you, I, I'm glad you asked me that question. Hold on, hold on. Um, that was actually a question he wanted. Hold on, hold on. The answer to that question is because. It is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I know a funny clown nose story. If anyone wants to know about it, so I, I think it's just that the the clowns, like everything, is kind of. Hello, Tara. Thank you for opening the door. That's the cat. <laughs> the, uh, just the, the, the way Killer Clowns works is everything is very clown-themed, obviously, but it's 
how everything is just turned on. It's like the, the noses are the weak points because a clown nose is something significant to clowns. Are you thinking it's like the glowy spot on a Metal Gear Solid villain? Hello? Cotton candy cocoons. Yeah, I rest my case. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay. Everything's got to have an Achilles heel, and with yes. clowns, it's the nose. That's just the way yeah. it is. What are you gonna do? We don't. We don't question it. It's a movie. Stop thinking. Yes. Just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. For yeah, the, it's, it's because the movie says it is. Yes. Okay. Okay, so... Anything else, guys? Yeah, Anthony uh, Hodak just came up with some kaiju clown-themed titles, if anyone wants to hear them. Not really. <laughs> you don't want Clownzilla versus Mind Throne? No. So, send, them, send them to me. All right, I'm sending... Uh, Spencer of Fairbanks is saying Killer Clowns remake, or do you think they should leave it alone? I leave it alone! Personally, I feel like sequel, yes. Remake, no. Yeah, I don't know about remake either. No, I don't know about remake either. I, and and I, I have spoken with the Kid Brothers on, they've asked me about some idea a long time ago, like in the mid-90s. And all this, I had like a list of ideas that I have no idea if they'll be incorporated or not. Uh, but uh, th they have nothing to do with a remake. It's a continuation. All right. Yeah. As long as it doesn't tell me how the mitochondrians work, I'm fine. Okay. No, that that is that is not there. Wow! 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 No, <laughs> that's not in. There. I love how everyone understands what I mean when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> tell me not about the mitochondrians. Okay. Darn we got no. zero minutes left on the Twitter poll, so I can mention how that went. Yay! Okay. Uh, the so lowest went to the clown suit cosplay set with only 10.5% of the vote. Aww. No one really wants to just dress like the clown, sadly. Mm. The insane clown posse might sue. However, 23.7%, uh, we have a tie between the circus tent spaceship toy and the cotton candy with gushers. Maybe they can be sold. Well, I don't want anyone to be jealous of me, and please don't hate me, but there's someone that's building me my favorite thing from Killer the Clowns, which is the spaceship. The <laughs> You're building me one. And it's like, it's like I, I can't tell you, I feel like a kid, you know, waiting for Christmas to come. Is it going to have that that massive he's in progress with as the he's big working on it? It's thing. completely awesome. What's that? Is it gonna have the massive interior with the big zapping thing with the power? Just like, yeah, this that that's that's the generator right there. <laughs> but um, that, that means well, number one is the eighties effects. you one, he'll make a generator for you. The eighties effects clown ray gun is the winner of the poll. <laughs> Though, of course. Oh, cool. In okay. the comments, Teddy Rubskin mentions that they want the giant clown monster doll that also hangs from strings. Uh, Crossbow Indiana made us. Said something going, don't put comedy in, in, don't put comedy in, comedy ruins scary things, which is actually not true. Like it says in my Christmas Strahd handbook, comedy and and horror are the best of bedmates. I feel like they both, uh, they, both comedy and horror stem from surprise. Yes. But they also have to make sense. Otherwise, it's yes. just, it's just randomness, which is just noise. Oh. I want. <laughs> Does it shoot lasers? <laughs> it's so. shiny and new. <laughs> oh, it's so, so they good. have those. I have the safety on, don't worry. Oh, good. So I don't know if that fires 80s effects right away, but I know in post-production I can add that. Yes, you could. Now I need, like, several of those, because I know I'm going to break at least 10. I love the this number. Is the edible version. This is not the edible version. Oh, there's an edible version? Yes, there is. Are you no. interested? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was, why did I, I just get one, the working one so I can turn everything into cotton candy? Dude, it'd be only pink cotton candy. You don't want, like, some flavor variety? Oh. It's got protein. Cotton candy, pure <laughs> sugar, and cart. Uh, Not to kill a clown, cotton candy. Like, brain <laughs> I remember showing Killer Clowns from Outer Space to a friend of mine last year for Halloween, and he goes, okay, I know the bodies are in the cotton candy. 
but what does the blood taste like? Does it taste like blood or is it really sweet blood? And I go, it's grenadine if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Because it was like wondering, does the flavor of the human taste different while that cotton candy? And then we started doing Walter Brimley impersonations about type 2 diabetes. This is what's sad about not being in the same room together because we could be taste testing this. Uh -oh. I want, I need candy. I have, a I have a taste test video. I have a taste test video of this with myself, um, Dead Meat James, and Chelsea, and um, Colleen Miller. She's an actress. And um, all I can tell you is that I think if a person ate one of these, you would be up for four days. Can I borrow some of those? I have dead ones. <laughs> <laughs> because it, 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 it does taste like cotton candy, white white chocolate cotton candy and cotton candy flavored jelly beans. So it's actually hey. actually pretty good. If you want something that's like so sweet and just knock you out, that's what that is. Uh, oh. Motorcycle oh. US dropped $5 asking Masadi, what type of music yes. would you write if clowns could hear their own music in movie and react to it? Love music in the original movie. Well, thank you very much. I, I love the, the original music in the original movie has a very special place in my heart. I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a really wonderful experience creating that. Uh, but what would I, I would create something soothing that would bring out the joy in clowns and perhaps they would reconsider their murderous ways. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know that Probably music not because they, they, they're just hungry, honestly. But. <laughs> You know that music that's usually associated with clowns? Da, 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 that one? Do you yeah, know that it's actually it. a military march song? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's from uh, an opera. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's, it's the, um, the Parade of the Spartans, I believe. Yeah. The Spartans? Then, yeah, Brave the Spartan. You know the SNM tops covered in body oil. Yeah, I I, I know the Spartan. But, like I, w I wouldn't imagine like if I was watching Three Hundred and that was playing. Like okay. yeah, you're talking about the Three Hundred Spartans. We're talking about 1860s, 1880s. <laughs> oh, different oh. Uh, world. <laughs> okay, then that, that that I guess that makes a little more sense. Yeah. I, I could imagine that, but I'd still have a chuckle. Uh, Metal Luna Zombie Ooh. was like. Just said, American candy is extremely sweet. If you eat any of our UK candy, it is all dull. Actually, to be honest, I really like jelly babies. And I really wish I had my UK contact so I could get jelly babies on the cheap. Ah, I, I just go on Amazon and order salmiaki. It's kind I of thought... like, it, it, it's it's described as salted licorice, but it's not really salted as much as it's chemicaled. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Japanese treat, right? Uh, Scandinavian. Oh, Scandinavian. Sorry, my brain broke. Yeah. Well, Decker, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted, cats. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to make a joke saying a friend of mine saw my Amazon wish list and saw all these different candies and foods, and they're like, are they not feeding you in your home? <laughs> <laughs> no, Florida just doesn't have a big Asian market. I, I do have to go. I do have homework that I'm doing. I'm actually prepping an album for the Christmas um, ah, very season. Nice. And um, so, um, I, 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 I would, I'd say another 10 minutes, if that's okay, unless there's something specifically you all as a panel uh, want to ask me. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, no, I feel like I was at that convention with Chris Sabat, and they were like, ask anything, and I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, okay, I actually do have a question. Like, Go for it. You mentioned uh, earlier during the show that you uh, you said you dropped hints that you would love to work with Decker, you know, on something like were you just mm -hmm. uh, were you just making idle conversation or were you how serious? Oh, no, were you I would love to do something. I'd love to do something with Decker. Decker is a very imaginative person, and yeah. he, he's reviewed enough movies where he's kind of got it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So perhaps maybe we can do a little short. Maybe because he, he wants to dabble in animation. Maybe so when, a, when it comes to come actually up, producing I mean, my own stuff, though, that's where I just just 
Crash. Burn. I have something to show you when the show is over with, if I may, Mr. Rosati. Yes. Does the uh, yeah, Japan you travel vlogs uh, struggling through there? By the way, the guy that does your music, uh, Decker, I really like his movie. Ichabod something. Ichabod Todd. Ichabod Todd. Ichabod Todd. I really like his, I, lo I love his sound. Oh, yeah. He, I love that sound. Really talented. Yeah, he's very, very talented. I mean, I'd, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to get a link to some of his uh, music and listen to it directly. Um, but in any event, um, yeah, sure, Decker. You know, think of, think of something, and then we'll, we'll do it. You know, for uh, crying out loud. Lone Dragon says, "Let him come. Let him have him back again for a Killer Clouds drinking game." <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Well, we did we did have a beer or two, you and I, did we not? Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah yeah. We, but we, we didn't have yeah, a drink. Again. We didn't have a drinking. <laughs> that would have it, it, it was a bit. Uh, we we were still in our nice suits. Yes, so, yes. So I don't think that. Well, that, that was tech. It was, it was your nice suits. I was in one of your nice suits. Well, one of but my I still have the suit, so it works. <laughs> you, thank goodness. For some reason, Decker's girlfriend thought that we. To go to this event, we had to be in a suit. It's like and you're I said, in a Hollywood, not a formal you're going, Hollywood event. It's you're going to get together with students. This is a big thing. Biggest thing you've ever done in your life, probably. Wear a suit. Yeah, yeah and we were the only guys with suits. They thought we were a hitman. You're <laughs> <laughs> we there to snuff someone out. Decker does kind of look like a hitman in a suit. No offense, Decker. That's right. You've heard I of it. Mean, <laughs> agent Decker, what would your number be if you were an agent? <laughs> I cannot see Decker as a as a professional hitman. Like not if, if Decker were a professional hitman, I see him as one of those like like in a comedy movie where he just sort of <laughs> stumbles backward into this profession and he keeps killing people by accident. No, my form of a hitman is me playing freaking the Hitman series, screwing up a lot, doing it the most comedically popular, the comedically funniest way of assassinating someone. So and you someone... do it while dressed as a clown? No, dressed as a flamingo mascot, but close enough. Uh, the, the clown <laughs> outfit for the Hitman is a very popular one. Yeah, and the flamingo <laughs> one's the new popular one if you play Hitman 2. Not Hitman 2, but the new Hitman. Yeah, the... the... Hitman 2, it's not the second Hitman, but like the... Second of the rebootish, if you will? The six or seven Hitman? I don't know. Hitman's weird. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, so that's, 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 what, that's the thing I would hope for in a Killer Clowns from Outer Space sequel. Don't name it something that would be confusing. Like, just Please calling go. it Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and then everyone's got to argue which one you're watching. <laughs> that's a good point. Is Decker's hair an instrument? I just read that, okay. Well, speaking of which, with all the barber shops closed, I, I, you don't go to the barber, uh, Decker. No. Oh, no. I, I, I've been trimming my goatee because my fiance was telling me I look too much like a homeless man. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and she oh, was I, not the I, first I, one to tell me I'm this. But uh, actually, actually, uh, our family around here owns a uh, salon in town. So that's actually been pretty tough that that had been shut down for a while. But now Texas is reopening a lot. And because yeah. we're in a much smaller town, it's uh, actually the amount of cases, the amount of new cases per week has just turned to zero around here. Lucky. Well, yeah, all the cases got contained and such, so it's still possible, it's still out there, still wear your mask, still stay six feet apart, still do all that. Be right. careful, for, wash your hands. For Jesus. But the place is now open again, and there's like a line every day because everyone is desperate to get their hair cut. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when all the right. hair places were closed around here, my mom's like, oh, thank God I just do every one of your hair. But you can, you can only have so many people inside. And there are chairs outside that are six feet apart. You know, there's, that's one reason why there's a line out the door every day is because you just can't have that many people in. Did you see that there was like this one cafe that they were like, they were open, but they would make everyone wear these like uh, construction helmets with uh, pool noodles on it that were six feet apart. It was like in Germany. It's like, you put a 
it's a six foot long pool noodle and you had it on your helmet and it would keep you to social distance. And it's like, if it's not king, it's bad. I think it was in Germany. What? Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're pulling in on the hour mark. So, Mr. Masari, do you have uh, any projects you would like to put out there that you are not legally obliged not to? <laughs> um, okay, well, there, there's a, there is something I'm involved with in Japan that's very, very, very awesome that I'll be um, talking about in the next few weeks. But basically, uh, I'll give you a hint. Um, there is a Japanese art of miniature of... Um, you know where they make the tree the bonsai okay bonsai, so yes. that, that's so that's the the concept is miniatures so uh -huh. there's that there's uh, I'm, I'm working on christmas music which i can't tell it's speak exactly what it's for but it's an interesting story actually it's a fascinating story of how i got to do some christmas music and um i have a movie that's out now a new movie that's out it's a thriller uh, done in the uh, deep electronica style, oh. and that that is Cool Hearts, and it's free on Amazon. Uh, I think it's Amazon Prime. Guess but who's got anyway. Amazon Prime? Guess who doesn't? Yeah. Well, I went back to my uh, my synthesizer roots. There's a uh, um, there's a soundtrack out of a movie I did uh, of a soundtrack I did with Bear McCreary called Hellfest, and I got I, I think I have four or five cuts on that album. That's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun to work with with Bear. It just it just is. It's just a lot of fun. And there's video of us working together, by the way. And let me see what else is there. Gosh, I can't think of anything right off the bat. I mean, if you look on my IMDB, there's more horror that I remember. Like I did the Cell Part Two. I did a, a horror thriller called uh, uh, Ring Around the Rosie. Uh, the Cell Two was bizarre. That was absolutely bizarre. It's a sequel to The Cell. And um, then there's a, there's a ton of television shows that I wasn't even aware of that my music is used in. Um, <laughs> there's Ghost Stories, uh, The Ghost Whisperer. There's My Haunted House. There's tons of horror stuff. So if, you, if you're waiting to hear more horror stuff, that's, that's where, where to get it. As long as you're still getting royalties. What's that? As long as you're still getting royalties. Well, that's, you know, that's part of, that's what keeps the lights on, you oh, know, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what you do, you know, you, you, if you do music that's, uh, that's workable and flexible in a variety of different manners, for instance, the Wizard of Speed and Time theme is used in toy, uh, the commercials for Toy Story 3 and the Toy Story, the new Toy Story video game. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, so it, it shows, it, you know, music is like, well, you have to think of it as a, pro as a property. And uh, the properties can be rented and leased and uh, borrowed to be used in very a variety of different things. That's why I have so many things on um, reality television. You know, there's the uh, even American Pickers. Someone called me the other day and says, "Do you realize the Wizard of Speed and Time is playing on American Pickers the other day?" I go, "No, because I don't watch American Pickers." <laughs> I mean, maybe I should. But anyway, so there, there, there's that. But the most most recent thing that I did is that, and a movie decker that you should review that I did for my good friend uh, uh, Scott Jenk uh, Todd Jenkins, and that is Cherokee Creek, and it takes place in Texas, and it's in your backyard, and it's about it might literally be in my backyard, backyard actually. That's I, I, I remember that one. That, that I know that one from. Oh man, it is so. It's like. It's a, imagine a, a monster movie meets The Hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, was there three or four guys, and they all are, they act like they're really, like even for a horror movie, they act really, really stoned, I think. This is my backyard, isn't it? Well, yeah. You have to see it. It's a, it's a very, there's a, they, they cross a lot of boundaries in that movie. So, uh, as a matter, of, he crossed so many boundaries that Amazon banned it for two months, <laughs> and uh, a, a, a fan uh, pressure brought it back. They thought it was too gross and too uh, uh, too offensive for mm -hmm. um, for Amazon, but they brought it back. So, I mean, I think that would be a a fun movie for you to consider to review. I'm not saying that. I, even if you give it a bad review, I, you know, any even your bad reviews of movies that are horrible are good reviews, in my opinion. So, 
It's let people um, know about these horrible uh, movies. And then uh, one of the things that I, about but being critic, I, like I, tr I try and about be, I try and be kind of professional you, you, about it, just in in the sense that. If I'm going to say something is good or bad, I have to back that up with reason. <laughs> right, right. No, well, you do it in such a fair and entertaining way, which is why, why I really love your uh, reviews. Um, and there's some people that are really good at tearing movies apart. Like there's the critical drinker that he just like, oh, oh man, yeah. he reps a movie <laughs> all the time. Um, but this latest movie I did, um, Cruel Hearts, is uh, me revisiting uh, Deep Electronica. Uh, which I haven't done in a while. I do a lot of orchestral stuff. I do a lot of sampling and, you know, I deal with samples and electronic, but as far as old time analog synthesizers, that's where you'll hear it in um, Cruel Hearts, directed by Paul Osborne. Okay. So that's also, it, guys. Also, it's one, been a lot of fun hanging out with you. One little question any, any came at film? the end there. From Mad Bear the okay. Nerd saying, what is it like to start a live stream? I'm new to making vids. Uh, okay. it's, it's, there's going to be problems. It's going to be problems. Yeah. But just keep, keep, keep at it. There you go. Just, just You'll apply also deal yourself. With trolls. You'll deal with yeah. trolls, people that just spam the, oh, I would, spam the chat. I would love to have a troll. I don't have any trolls yet. No, you don't. Troll. Yes, because you I would like look at their thing. I would look at what they say and go, oh my god, it, it's simply... It's simply horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, he would do what Decker and I did when we read our 4chan comments together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a fun day. Oh, my God. I wouldn't even want to. I, I don't think I would. 4chan is not a place I think I would want to go. Oh, no. no. Anyways, guys, I wish I could De give you all a big virtual hug or high five. I think virtual hugs are the only ones we're allowed to do right now. Yeah. <laughs> Kat, it, was good. it was good to meet you, Cat. Uh, creepy, I will deal with you later. And uh, Decker, as usual, it is a great honor. And, Thank you very uh, much. You are us. indeed, you are indeed the worldwide web personality with the best hair. <laughs> ah, uh, you flatter me. We love you for it. <laughs> oh, great! Now, Deck, cre now creepy has to challenge. It's like watching two peacocks you can, fight. You can you you can use that as a um a, a, as a soundbite. When I'm a guest on Creepy's show, I'll give him a plug for his uh -oh. great hair. Anyways, guys, take care. It's good to be hanging out with you. Keep it, keep up the good work, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you very much for joining us. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. And he okay. has left the building. Now let's break out the beer. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> Why did I go into this bike? This bike isn't even the one I'm using. I'm using the bike. Ah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Glad we got a lot of commentary going with the, between the chats. I'm happy, but we also have a lot more news to talk about. Serious yes, face, everyone. Serious. Mm -hmm. So who wants to talk about news? <laughs> Shall we talk about the news and the great big overlord in the sky? Okay. Whew. Where, where do you segue to from that? <laughs> well, um, you guys can hear me, right? I was worried my audio went out. Hello? Congrats on no dislikes. Uh, Mad Bear, you jinxed it. You jinxed it. <laughs> Is my audio Over, Oh, yeah, you're coming through. You're coming through. Sorry, sorry it's just my, my, my mic did a weird blinky thing. Uh, I was the, confused by the mic. Call him Damien. It's like, news? And Inquisitor Machina says... says no. <laughs> no one wants to do news. No one. No one at all. Uh, but we have to do it for uh, science. I have a. I have a few things set up here with quick little, quick little uh, descriptions, so we don't necessarily have to load up the articles. I get to say the basics, and we can discuss the topic. So, hey, anyone out there a fan of American Horror Story? I am. Actually, I have been a fan of American Horror Story in the past. I haven't watched the last couple of seasons, but... I, I kind of yeah. find it hard to get into it because you kind of have to watch the whole season, and I'm not really a TV watcher. I'm but you're a watcher. I was about to say, you could just binge like the rest of us humans. <laughs> no. But uh, totally. this uh, the new American Horror Story spinoff has been announced by Ryan Murphy, which is not going to require binge-watching. 
It's the my kind of show. Uh, Shorts. <laughs> like, so what did they do exactly then? So the it creator of American Horror movie. Story is spearheading a spin-off series, less about season-long stories told in episodes, and more single-episode stories akin to The Outer Limits or The Twilight Zone. Excerpt from the article oh. says... This spin-off will consist of short one-hour stories that are contained to single episodes rather than full seasons. At this point, there's no telling if American Horror Stories will air on FX alongside the original series, or if they will be released online. Hmm. So, I'm more interested in this. Is it because it's because it's one episode and it's like a Saturday morning cartoon where everything's contained in its own little bubble? Yes! I mean, what, what uh-huh. am I supposed to do with American Horror Story if I see, like, the first couple of episodes of this American Horror Story thing, and I'm like, I'm not really feeling this. I'm like, well, that's it for the rest of the season for me, I guess. I mean, I will that's admit... I more with more things. Yeah. I like my episodes to be episodes. I'm gonna have an episode in a second. Doctor, when are you not having an episode? <laughs> <laughs> so on this episode of Live and Wire... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ken maybe says, less binging, more purging. No purging, unless we're purging on a giant cheesecake. Yeah. You eat the key cheesecake, Decker. The, 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 the binge part is the eat. The purge part is the... Oh! Oh, Christ! <laughs> Cap did not think about what to think about the sentence. Sorry. Decker, Decker does not know what words are. No, Cat doesn't know what words oh, are. Cat doesn't know what words are. Okay, my bad. Never mind. Well, Motorcycle oh, US from two dollars asking, Creepy, are you going to be posting blocked vids to Patreon? Uh he'd have an issue with that. Yeah. Patreon does not do video hosting. It's basically they rely on a secondary like YouTube or Vimeo or Daily Motion and uh, Vimeo. Yeah. Vim- Vimeo's the one where you gotta pay them to upload to them. Right. I just like a lot of times when I was having trouble with a lot of things, people were saying, "Hey, just use Vimeo." And Vimeo, was... while an option, isn't really an option if you're living hand to mouth. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm doing a lot better has... now than I was last year, but still musical... not doing fantastic. Uh, musical Hail basically. Um, that was her last resort when posting one of the Swan Princess uh, musical. Reviews she, she had did. a lot of problems with those reviews too. Mm. You know, I met the producer who made the original Swan Princess. Mm-hmm. He was really nice, and he smelled like mint <laughs> because his daughter was constantly worried that he would have bad breath. So she's like, "Mint, mint, mint." <laughs> Every time she oh. saw it, mint. Okay. <laughs> Yay for mint, I guess. Yeah, nice guy. Okay. So let's yeah. see. I would personally like, I, like it, it, part of me wants to say like, yeah, Twilight Zone kind of stuff. That's really good. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I like classic Twilight Zone. And it's, we, we've had this discussion before. We already know why. It's because it rev- they had so many restrictions back then. They couldn't do the shock horror. So oh. they had to go psychological. And because of that, <laughs> they made some timeless ass stories. Right. Yeah, and... Was that also, when they were making it, was it also during the era if there was a bad character, the Barad character had to get a comeuppance and not get away with stuff? Because I know there was, yeah. there used to be a law in film for That's a while. That's a lot of Hays Code. The Hays Code. Code. All hail the Hays Code. Like the comic Hays Code, which we all ignore now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that, that, that reminds oh. me a bit in the Wizard of Speed and Time. It's too bad John had to go. He's, he's a working man. He works. Uh, but there... Um, you get the feeling that Mike Jitlov, I think Jitlov, Jitlov. I should have asked while Masari was still here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, you get the feeling that the guy just uh, isn't the biggest fan of a lot of the regulations in Hollywood. There's a long scene where he's being brought from one union to another union to this union. And you got to sign up there, got to do this, got to do that, got to wait on this list for this long and pay this fee, pay that fee. All kinds of stuff when he's just trying to put a little short together, and he's being told you got to do this, that, 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 and it's like, oh, that's an interesting little scene. I went to his uh, went to the Wizard of Speed and Time website, which looks like an old, early '90s website. It still runs. The links work. 
It's an amazing site if you remember classic internet. Uh, but you get little pictures. It's like, here's a picture of, from here. It, click for the larger image, and you get all the stuff and you know the normal things. But there's a little Easter egg on the site as well. Uh, the little picture of a 1913 tax form. It says, click for an expansion, and you click it, and it expands. But it doesn't expand the picture right away. It goes to an entire different huge blog article thing where Mike goes on and on about the tax code. <laughs> and just how fucked taxes are in California. It's like, you know, technically speaking, if you add all this up, you get it to about like a 53% income tax in California, and that's not even counting the invisible taxes in there. Now let's f compare this over to the 1913 tax form here. You see, up to $20,000, you were p taxed nothing. Above $20,000, you got 1%, and that went to like 50000 And then he had the breakdown of compare that in 1913 to what that money was in twenty in two, the year 2000. Like, yeah. Com compare for inflation. And it's like, wow, Mike, you really don't like the tax man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> most of us don't like the tax man, but Mike, you spent days thinking about this. You have stayed up at night like, fucking tax man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fun fact. I remember this in digital design. Um, when I was in digital design, it was like 2009, 2010. And my teacher, Mr. Dunn, even pointed out going, the reason why like there's a DeVry here, and there's full sale here, and like a lot of st schools now learning Hollywood effects is because Florida doesn't have as many taxes as California does when it comes to, um, you know, stuff. Right. Hollywood stuff. Was... And that's the reason why Holly how Florida became like Hollywood 2.0. But Actually, Hollywood to Hollywood was the film industry 2.0 because the film industry started in like the Northeast, but it yeah. got there were so many extra taxes and regulations thrown on top that a large amount of filmmakers just started anew in Hollywood, California. And mm -hmm. now they're doing and, it in Florida as well as Georgia. Yeah, though there's a there's a lot of like right now a lot of things are still centralized in Hollywood, but they'll go to other places for Absolutely. filming. There's a lot of uh, Hollywood movies being filmed in Texas. A uh, good amount of places that are set in New York are actually filmed in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that Toronto is like the Hollywood of, Ca of Canada. And like, if you want to do a cheap horror movie, Romania! <laughs> oh, what about or, Bulgaria? Or Bulgaria. Or if you want to do a medieval movie that really looks like because they, someone doing the movie A Knight's Tale, which is a great movie, I highly recommend for anyone who likes Heath Ledger and knights and shit. They said they filmed in Bulgaria not only because it was cheap, but the people they could hire locals as extras because they really did have that look. Mm. Not being mean to Bulgarians, but you know what I mean. The we have done stuff, we have worked all day, you know, mm -hmm. medieval peasantry look. Uh, Ken mentions there is a Hollywood, Florida, too, you know. I'm very well aware of it. <laughs> uh, so the, the opening of Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny, where Ronnie James Dio tells him to go to Hollywood, and then it shows the little driving around, going to every single Hollywood in the country, and then Hollywood, California. It's like, <laughs> I've been to Paris, France, Texas. <laughs> okay. Decker, you forgot Tom Edison strong-arming people? Oh, yeah, Tom Edison, uh, he's uh, known today very infamously as just the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Asshole? The trademark asshole. Ah. Uh, he would just trademark everything, and it's like, you know, he didn't really invent the light bulb, it was just one, it was one of the people working for him, but he patented it. He patented this, he oh. patented that. And uh, Thomas Edison was also, like, he was, he, he had, you know, direct current. That was his patent, like, direct current. Yes. Boom. I came up with this. It was nice. And someone's like, hey, I came up with something else. It's called alternating current. Nikola Tesla! And Thomas Edison was like, oh, you did alternating current, huh? You did fucking alternating current, huh? Well, I'm going to vent the fucking electric chair and kill an elephant with alternating current! What do you think of your alternating current now? <laughs> I want Zachary to do a horror movie based around Thomas Edison. I think I actually know about the elephant. This is the sad thing.
so they made a big giant deal because this elephant apparently was a very bad elephant bad elephant because she kind of escaped attacked a few guests it was most likely not because of how how uh barnum and balaam treated their elephants back then no <laughs> but they decided barnum and bailey i think it was part of it was a circus they decided to advertise the the killing of this giant elephant by alternate by direct current and i'm like what? was it ace uh, 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 thomas edison one yeah the edison one it's like what the sick why Actually, those clips are still available somewhere on the internet. Because oh. they actually did film it. Or oh, speaking of security, I guess. Uh, Decker Shadow, Creepy and Cat, thoughts of James Cameron complaining about Ripley's panty singing and Alien now being called exploitive. Are you meaning he's calling it exploitative or he's are, are is he complaining that people are calling it exploitative? Because well, I saw it as a moment of vulnerability myself as I, a woman. I feel like it... it the way it worked was just like it was it wasn't for no reason she was getting ready for the uh the cryo cryo, which they already established in the beginning of the movie they don't wear that much for cryo and also in the original script they did cryo naked with goo on them so 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 they, they, they they toned that down already uh but in terms of uh just narratively it does Bring, like vulnerability it's just to show that yeah she she's not in this big armored thing she's not like super ready for anything that comes to her she's in a vulnerable position which is how nudity is used in a lot of times in horror but also in most of those instances as pure cheese and fan service mm-hmm. which i'm not against yeah but i don't feel like that was the whole like not that wasn't really the focus it's like that was more a subversion ish if it could have because like the the secondary ending part wasn't really that common in horror back then yeah. alien was one of the ones that really made it popular whereas like the alien it, it, it's like she flew off the spaceship the, the spaceship they were on blew up like three times and okay. she's like god you son of a bitch and that, that's usually where the things end. But then she's yeah. like, okay, I'm going to get ready for cryo, strip naked. Well, not quite naked, but then yeah, it's, it's like, like, surprise! Alien's still fucking here. And really slow and kind of groggy, may have been drinking, I don't know. It's not like they run around and go, <clears throat> in later movies. But still, pretty big threat. Yeah, it's like, let's pretend you've heard a weird random noise while you were in your lovely, comfy bed of happiness. Are you going to go and put on pants right now <laughs> when the noise is happening? You're going to go out there and see what the heck's going to happen. I, 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 I sleep in Muskivaziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziz
once in a PG-13 movie. I will as as never it make it on a PG-13 movie. <laughs> right. What? I will never make it on a PG-13 movie. That's true. <laughs> but no, yeah, you're right. Um, you can show full frontal. You can show a woman's boobs Close on. Up. Yeah, boob nudity. And uh, you can't show what's below the belt, but you can show boobs in... Uh, a PG-13 movie as long as they're not sexualized. Like, in the case of the, like you said, in case of uh, the Titanic, it was a nude sketch, which is considered an, an an art form. You know, you actually have to study, I don't need to explain this to you, Kat, you have to study nude, nude sketching in, in college. I, I'm just imagining, like, the, the guards popping in there, catching him in the act, and, what's going on here? And he just turns, it's like, it's educational. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I am trying to study for college. <laughs> and then I just imagine the guards going, "Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry." And then just turn around and walk <laughs> right back to the <laughs> That's like a yeah. Mel Brooks scene right there. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's like in Dracula Dead and Loving It when Reinfeld wakes up and the two vampire temptresses are in the room with him, and he's just like, "My God, what are you doing to the furniture?" <laughs> no, it's like. It's so like weird how like in movies and media they try to make the nude art scene sexy. It's not. It's cold. We're all uncomfortable, and we're praying nothing happens while we're getting sketched. It's like, uh, 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 uh. I mean, yeah. they're like, uh, I actually I'm not moving. <laughs> I actually saw this uh, sketch someone did and posted. I think it was on Tumblr. This was year several years ago. This was before the big Tumblr purge, you know, uh. a while back. But um, uh, it was done by an uh, erotic artist. And Kat, you will really sympathize with this. They were like, they, like panel one was uh, what everyone thinks I do, and it has this woman like holding a pen, like in this almost dainty, you know, feminine sort of way, you know, doing like sketches on a paper and then going, oh, I'm so horny. <laughs> and then in frame, wait, frame two, what she was like, what I actually do. Oh, crap, I broke this leg all wrong. I've broken it, I think. <laughs> when I drew one something for creepy, it was like, oh, crap, I forgot his balls. <laughs> Or this other time when she had the leg and it was like doing this Mr. Fantastic thing. Like they were standing in the middle of the room and the leg was stretched all the way out and placed on a, a bench. And I'm just like, that is not how anything works. I'm sorry. I, perspective was never my strong suit. <laughs> but it, it is like kind of funny how people are like, oh, you must get turned on doing this. I'm like, a dick's a dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like it really does kind of take the fun out of some of it when you have to do when you have to like it's like you have to pay such meticulous detail to the human anatomy, which is not a straight line in any sense of no, the word. I'm kind of a straight line. line. Yeah, the yeah, human body is hard. like yeah, the human body has all these bumps and contours and turns and everything else, and and you have to keep track of all of it if you're going to do this. So yeah, more often than not, you just end up. I know from hearing Cat, more often than not, you just end up staring at your screen and cursing a lot. <laughs> I once sent a message to a friend of mine going, "Crap, I forgot how ball physics works." Because the guy is not. No, the guy wasn't standing up. He was laying down. I'm like. Do the balls do something different when they're in this position? I forgot. <laughs> she had to go watch a porno with someone laying in that position, so then she would find out. Now the too much I movement. Friend, I, I had a friend who was like, I was stressed, and he goes, "Go watch some porn, relax." I'm like, "That's my job now." <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like some weird Decker Shadow nostalgia critic reviewer of porn. Uh, Motorcycle US dropped two dollars, saying, "Creepy." In a Mel Brooks, a Brooks film, the guards would give advice. That's true, that's true, that's true, yeah. <laughs> and one of them would be very particular about how the feet are drawn. <laughs> no, that's a Tarantino movie. Sir. <laughs> but, yes, speaking of movies, uh, there is the Super Mario movie, and the news is there's no news. <laughs> no. It's, everything's continuing on as normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is news, considering Redacted is messing up a lot of films being produced. I mean, strictly uh, speaking, compared to what went, do what went down when the first Super Mario movie was made back in the early 90s, it can only be better. Minus the stripper thing. 
Say what? Sorry. What happened during the filming of the first Super Mario movie? Minus the strip club. Strip uh, club. You don't know about the strip club, Decker? You can tell him. Thank you. So, do you know the club? There, that club scene where he, where it's with like what? The, who's supposed to be the cheap cheap? Or the uh, Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Yeah. yeah. Well, that scene was all filmed during a strip club in a strip club, an actual legitimate strip club with naked dancers. And they had to do retakes over and over again during the middle of girls' changes out so they wouldn't have naked women on the screen. Multiple takes had to be done. Well, fun, fun, wonderful. And also, um, what? What, was the, what was the actor's name who played Mario? I, I, I forget his name. I'm bad with names. Uh, uh, I know who. Captain, I just can't I, think of their name. I went yeah. Captain Lou Albano. I'm like, wrong Mario. Wrong Mario. That was in the Super Mario Super Show. No, but he was actually asked in an interview once, like, what was your, uh, what was the worst, like, uh, what was the worst movie role and something else? Like, basically, like, three, you know, three worst ro worst role, worst uh, movie, like, worst director experience that you've ever had. And he says, oh, I can name that easy. All three is the Super Mario Brothers movie. He hated doing that movie. He hated every second of it. Apparently, it was so bad being on that movie that he and John Leguizamo were drunk playing, were drunk the whole time. That would explain a few scenes. Wait, was it the guy who was known for, who did Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. No, it was uh, No, it was? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Well, Why are we even it? asking this question? We have the internet. Let's just- Because technology well, hates I'm us. I'm gonna read the rest of the bit I wrote down about the articles. Okay, despite redacted causing problems worldwide where movies and video games alike are facing challenges in production, the new Super Mario movie appears to be moving along at a reasonable pace, thanks in part to remote working. However, this may not be the case forever, as explained in this oh, excerpt okay. of a quote from Nintendo president Furukawa. Considering the working environments between home and office are quite different, it could become increasingly difficult to release our games in line with our current schedule if the situation is prolonged. I'm impressed that a lot of people who are working on this movie actually have computers strong enough to do the animation for this movie. I'm just saying. Bob Hoskins. That was I his said name. That. I said oh, okay, my bad. I didn't hear the name that you said. I apologize. It's okay, Mario, Decker. Mario. Luigi Mario. And your name's Mario Mario. My brain hurts. <laughs> Even as a kid, I didn't like the Mario movie. No I one liked it. <laughs> Kids especially. Like Mario. It, it's, it's like, game. hey, you know, Mario, you know that game that you love that's just about going from left to right and jumping on shit? Yes. Well, here's this thing about this guy, he's like a New Yorker and stuff, and he's got this little dinosaur here that's Yoshi, but doesn't fucking look like him. Looks like some reject from Jurassic Park. And there's snot oh, everywhere, because you're a kid, you like snot, right? Anyway, Prince is doing Jurassic stuff. Park his King Koopa, I don't know who the fuck that's supposed to look like, but we got some star power that your little ass don't care about. Captain Lil Albana did a good Mario, though. Mm. Well, the Brooklyn Mario. Not the Italian Mario, not it's nowadays. Oh, boy. Anyway, that was fun. Decker's going crazy. Yeah, that's true. Oh, boy. Ah, Demon Orc on Twitch says that they actually liked the Super Mario movie for what it was. Uh, Happy Canuck actually said that Mario is his guilty pleasure. Their guilty pleasure. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's fine. That's another That's movie it. that we need to review, Decker. And <laughs> Zario Shark 916 on Mixer gave a thousand sparks with a You Are a Rad oh, sticker. Oh, Thank you. Aw, oh, you got a sticker. You can put it on your binder. And Scruff McGruff gave a hundred sparks with a GG. <laughs> the Scruff McGruff? From Chicago, Illinois? No, X Six Scruff of... McGruff X. Oh. But while we're saying GG and talking about video games and stuff, we have a little video game news, and it actually ties into the title card. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. You like dinosaurs? Yes. You like them in 4K? Yes. I mean, I when know they were you designed for the PlayStation 1? Maybe. Because the uh, Dino Crisis PC port of the PlayStation 1 game, which is no longer for sale anywhere, but if you got it, there is a fan mod out now that actually 
makes it more compatible with newer hardware and actually allows for advanced features like 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, and widescreen. And, uh, yeah, I can... Uh, but, are, but do the dinosaurs have feathers or just scales? It, they, it's the same dinosaurs as they were in the PlayStation game. Okay. So I'm going to give a link to where the mod is to the chat. Oh, thank you, Happy Canuck. 60652. That was the Scrap McGruff thing. Thank you. So. So. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I, I personally, uh, uh, Dino Crisis is one of those things where because of the success of the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, a lot of people are saying, hey, Dino Crisis, and there's talk saying, hey, we might be thinking about doing Resident Evil 4, and a lot of people are saying, Resident Evil 4, you keep re-releasing that every generation anyway, and it's fine. It doesn't need the big gameplay overhaul that 2 and 3 needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Code was Veronica, Dino maybe do that one. Uh, <laughs> was Dino Crisis the one you played once and then you played it again and got a totally different ending, or am I thinking of a totally different dinosaur-based game? See, the problem is I never played the original Dino Crisis. I played the hell out of Dino Crisis 2, which everyone tells me was the crappy one. <laughs> I thought 3 was the crappy one. Was there a 3? Welcome yeah. to the debate. <laughs> maybe it was so crappy no one ever talks about it. Like oh, the Mario movie. This is friggin' strange. Oh, Zariel Shark gave 400 more sparks with a taco. Thank you. I like taco. Wait, beef, fish, chicken? Damn it. Now I want tacos. Damn it, so I the want game tacos. in those graphics will be in 4K. Yes, both wine. It's yeah. just going to have a lot of pixels to show those PlayStation 1 textures. Ooh. I'd like yeah. to see that being done with the original Silent Hill game and its original entity. But yeah, just for there were. There were three Dino Crisis games, and for a while there, like back in the latter half of the 90s, Dino, believe it or not, Dino Crisis and Resident Evil were kind of neck and neck with each other for a little while in the, whole, <laughs> in the whole survival horror genre. Because like on the one side, you had the Resident Evil fans who were like, Jill Valentine and... Chris Redfield, I guess, or Leon Kennedy, because he's so much better, which is... Leon! Cool. Yeah. Or on the other side, you had the Regina fanboys who wanted to go around shooting dinosaurs, which, I mean, endangered or extinct species that you're making extinct again, but, you know, still killer dinosaurs. And, well, yeah, the... Dino Crisis games had a pretty strong following at one time. It's kind of weird to think of it that way because Resident Evil kept making games and Dino Crisis petered out after the third game. So, yeah. Yeah, and then it became Resident Evil versus. And Silent it's not Hill like they never that. made a bad Resident Evil game. <laughs> Wait, there are bad Resident Evil. That's games what I'm saying. There? Like, it, it's like oh, three was you... the bad one, and then so they stopped. It's like oh, it's not like they never made a bad Resident Evil. What about Survivor? I'm saying it's not like they ever they never made a bad Resident Evil. No, I just wanted to remind you of Survivor. <sighs> Which is Racco Operation Raccoon City. Yeah. I think that one has been re-released, though. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. Like, the actual Resident Evil series is fine. Code Veronica was the only good spinoff. Every other spinoff was kind of... Meh. Mm -hmm. Is Zero a spinoff, or is it a part of the timeline? I think it's supposed to be a part of the timeline. It follows Rebecca, Rebecca Chambers. Oh, yeah. And a guy we never get to see in the first Resident Evil game. Yeah. Yeah, but he's like prison ish kind of stuff. Like, he was in prison. Thing. Yeah. He, they were doing a. What do they call it when they're making prisoners go from point A to point B? Moving prison prisoners. Oh. Uh, Ken Mobby just donated $5 Roonies. De we need a Decker made, a Decker made ending to an A. To alien, put Decker in a tiny child-sized panties to beat up a penis monster from another planet. You know I'll do it. <laughs> yes. <I'm not. laughs> I can see Decker doing that. You don't even yeah. have to pay me. I will pay you. I feel like that should be the en the ending to an alien review. Like there has to be one <laughs> alien movie, a one alien movie that Decker hasn't reviewed, and the stinger, the post-credits scene at the end is Decker in like this. Silver diaper sting speedo sort of thing, you know, and he's battling a penis monster. <laughs> you know, there's still Alien 2 on Earth. 
I've been meaning to do that one since I started reviewing movies. You mean the Asylum movie? No, 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 no. The uh, Italian Alien oh. sequel. Oh, the pre-Asylum <laughs> knockoff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to joke saying Decker could fight the monster naked, but it'd be like uh, uh, The Sims censoring giant uh, Anthony Hudox asking, did you get Doom Eternal yet, or are you still obsessed with EDF? EDF, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and now Manhunt. Uh, Maneater. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, tell me you've heard you've played Maneater. Ain't that awesome? Yeah, the controls are a bit annoying, but... Uh, I want him to, I want him to find him the original Jaws of the video so game. The, 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 the unf- Big unfortunate thing with the controls is there's like no accessibility options at all, so Charlie can only watch me play. Hmm. No. Like, there's... I am enjoying oh, I am enjoying EDF Iron Rain though. I'm actually better at Iron Rain than I am at EDF five. <laughs> like Decker had can attest to this. I, I was like, boom, okay, I killed one. Boom, okay, I killed another, boom, I killed a third one. Is that okay? Are there any more? Did I miss anyone? <laughs> They're gone, creepy. Man, <laughs> uh, MC just me- just messaged us going. Decker needs to review the Land Before Time movies. Do you know how many there are of Land Before Time movies? What, well, I just think I'll do the first 20? one, and I'll have to take a break to just mentally just. <laughs> I'll have no, to take like, a mental break in the middle of the review. That is a depressing movie. No, the first yeah. one's good. The second one's it's good. It's good. The, the one's... first one's good, but it is so. Depressing. Depressing. As a kid, you're just like, cool, dinosaurs, not sinking in any of the death. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's, it, it, it's a Don Bluth film, though. Don Bluth films are depressing. Like, if you go back and you watch all Don Bluth movies, they are a combination of nightmare fuel and child trauma. Uh, Troll in Central Park didn't really have child trauma, though. It was just watching crazy. watching Ch- Troll in Central Park as a child is traumatic in and of itself. <laughs> I liked it as a kid, but then again, pretty things. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, the rat, the the secret of Nim. Good luck. Okay, uh, mm. all dogs go to heaven. Do I even I... need to remind you of the hell scene? No. Then, then there's uh oh oh I'm uh, what was the name of it? Um um damn it, it's right on the tip of my tongue. It was, no, it was, oh, oh, Amer- an American tale, the oh. entire movie. Okay. There, are no cats, there are no cats in America, and the walls and the roads are paved with cheese. I, I remember I was so pissed when after, after I saw that movie the first time, then I went back and watched it again, and it got to that song, and I was so pissed the whole time, because I was like, lies! Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Wasn't it supposed to be an allegory too when a lot of Eastern European people moved to America and yeah. were like Yes, yeah. You know, as an adult, I get it now. I get what it was, but as a child I was just like, You are all being lied to. <laughs> what up? <laughs> what do you feel about Five O goes west? Hated it. Although it did have some it did have some catchy tunes. And the uh, actress who played movie. actress who played Five's sister was a really good singer. I did. I yeah. did think she was a really good singer. But I wa- I did not like the movie itself. No. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. but um, like re- even Rockadoodle for all. And believe it or not, I like Rockadoodle. It's it's flawed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I like it because it's part of Don Bluth's perfection age. I'm not saying that. But despite its flaws, I still enjoy Rockadoodle. But it's still a pretty depressing movie. Be if you really think about it, you know, like okay. there's a child who's about to lose everything that he ever knows because the farm is flooding. He's got turned into a cat. He has to go and get lost in a town trying to find this rooster who somehow has the magical ability to make a sunrise. And and you know, like, and then the rooster gets seduced by a chorus girl because this. What was he again? A mole, a weasel, I think. Something. Anyway, Boss yeah. Hog. He was played by. He was played by the same actor who who portrayed Boss Hog. Anyway, he's like got this whole thing going where he wants to make money because the king is his meal ticket. So he has the chorus girl start giving it up to 
Chanticleer so that he won't leave town. And I mean, it just keeps going. If you think about it, there's a, there's both a lot of depressing things in that movie, but there's also a lot more adult things going on in that movie than people give it credit for. Yeah, like uh, Cats Can't Dance, Don't Dance, Can't Dance. Yeah, so, Cats Don't Dance, Cats Don't Dance. Speaking of yeah. horrifying movies, you know about uh -huh. the Hatchet series? <laughs> we already discussed the plot of Hatchet 5. Would you like to know the pl plot? Well, I, I'm just waiting. This is the part where everyone in the comments tells me, hey, Decker, when are you going to review the rest of the Hatchet movies? <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, Cat is you know, looking like forward Hatchet to it. 1, 2, and 3 came out was a nice self-contained trilogy, and then very much in secret, Victor Crowley, a.k.a. Hatchet 4, was produced and released. Well, according to BloodyDisgusting.com, Adam Green, the director of the Hatchet series, is just saying, yeah, we're going to get a fifth movie. Why not? It's going mm -hmm. to be two hours of them using a hatchet to take apart a bunch of butternut squash, which is what <laughs> I had to do. I had to do that earlier before the stream. Like, I was like, oh, here's two butternut squashes. I need you to cube them for me. I'm go, okay, whatever. My biggest chef's knife can't even. You <laughs> could let me try to use the knife. You know how to properly use the knife Hell and actually no. watch the I was going to say, did you watch the safety video I made for you? No, I, I feel like <laughs> it's, it's weird because, like, I, I make that cheesecake video and everyone's like, Decker, you have no idea how to use a knife. And as you know, I've been watching Unis and it And okay. they, they go to the onion eating episode and there's Ethan there and he's showing how to properly use a knife to cut the onions. And just, just the other day, they have they had this other episode where um, Markiplier tied his phone to his face to block his eyes and use the camera to give Ethan his POV so that Ethan could t walk him through making an omelet. And so he, he goes for the knife, and Ethan is desperately begging for Markiplier to hold the knife properly and use proper form. Ah. Um. <laughs> And I'm like, I feel like I'm getting some subliminal messages here throughout the whole world. It's just everywhere I'm looking is people saying, Decker has no fucking idea how to use a knife. Decker, Decker, fingers. <laughs> no! <laughs> Audience, for those who don't know, I actually filmed myself cutting tomatoes because I was making bruschetta. And I was like, this is how you use a knife, Decker. No! <laughs> I said it to him and he never watched it. <laughs> God damn it. We've kind of fallen back into our groove. It's like when John Masari was here in the room with us, every it felt like everyone, including the audience, was holding our breath. We were all like, ah, I must don't not want it. Yeah. I, I, I needed don't want more it. topics, I think, but oh well. Uh still was Although fun, I still worked out good. I, th I think at, uh, the, the big problem was this the start and the huge hiccup we had where it, yeah <laughs> just kept like going. right right off the bat we tripped and it was like uh -huh. oh oh uh oh uh -huh. We're professionals <laughs> oh. anyway that so are, that uh, needs to be live and wired's official <laughs> slogan live and wired we're professionals. That, 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 that's how I sell it during the Stephen King drinking game. We are professional drinkers. But also, I have a topic that you two can probably t speak on for the next five hours. Oh. Uh, the there's this article that was titled "Gargoyles was nearly the center of a vast Disney cinematic universe and how O.J. Simpson helped kill the show." You know. What? I didn't like OJ, but now I hate him even more than I already hated him. Now, what? now here's the, here's the thing. This article uh, I wrote on the news sheet. It what? was it, it was what? 44 Stephen King sized paragraphs. You know those giant paragraphs that could easily be three paragraphs. Yes, yeah. I've had to read them or more before. Remember the Pee Wee Herman thing? Yeah, uh, you want to you want to read this one? It's uh, news article number six on the list. It is massive. I don't fire want me the link. I, do, I fire me the link. I don't have the news article open. Ah, right. Uh, well, uh, okay. I I I don't want. Decker, it's a cut and paste. You can do a cut and paste. I don't. I can do it. Yeah. Okay. Cat can do it. Cat has actual jobs in life. Okay. I forgot to open. <laughs> Demon the Orc's like, what the fuck? OJ killed Gargoyles. 
that was what consumed my thoughts, trying not to humiliate myself in front of John Masari. There's the link. Oh, Goliath. Oh. Look at the size of that article. Okay. I cried when I saw it, because I peeked at the news sheet. I'm like... Ahem. So were we reading War and Peace, or is this the tale of two cities? This was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I do not remember the rest of the stupid thing, because I start zoning out. Okay, I'm doing the screen share thing. You want to really read it, or you just want to show the audience how crazy it is? Hi. I'll kill the show and so much more. Okay. When Disney Plus launched in oh, November God. 2019, the what? The what? Creepy, the what? don't read. <laughs> for your sanity. Just show the audience how many paragraphs it is, and Decker can give the TLDR or the Kiff notes. Oh, Goliath. <laughs> and it keeps going and going and going. Why do I, 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 how many? Maybe it's giving a whole recap of every single episode of Gargoyles, which is 44 isn't... Stephen King size paragraphs, which means I only counted the Stephen King size ones. Those bold ones that are only like one paragraph or a sentence or two. I didn't count that. Because you loved us? <sighs> so, uh, the story goes lot. that Explain Gargoyles it. was doing really well, and lots of folks at Disney actually wanted to use it as a launch pad for an action-centric Disney universe. However, within a short span of time, most of the folks at Disney who were leading the charge had either left, some forming DreamWorks, or passed away. And the new execs saw the idea of something as something that the old Disney was working on, and therefore it really wasn't important. Morons. So, on terms of the OJ helping kill Gargoyles concept, the show was constantly snubbed for airtime during the OJ Simpson trial. That, combined with a new show showing up and taking the number one spot for kids' action series, something called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, had <laughs> made Gargoyles the second fiddle and... What? You still like Gargoyles? I love Gargoyles! Why is Disney so shocked that people love Gargoyles? I I even joked once at, when I was at what 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 was back then Disney, uh, uh, downtown Disney, now Disney Springs, but it was downtown Disney when I said this, going, why isn't there any Gargoyles merch? And the guy who runs the place goes, I ask myself that every time I have to do inventory. <laughs> it's just like, it's a great series, and it's one of those things that can show you can do deep, dark crap for kids and kids will love it yes this will explain my hatred of modern children's television you want to know how much shakespeare is in this fucking show <laughs> and how many how many kids actually got it you know like they were like oh you know of course there's been a lot of english teachers got you know migraines and that throbbing rage uh, blood vessel in their temple whenever a kid said, oh, I know what you're talking about. It was on Gargoyles a few years ago. So, but still, there, hey, at least they were paying attention. You think there were any, you remember when Romeo and Juliet, the, the movie with the guns, which Decker will complain about later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Decker later. Later, Decker. And do you think like the same concept, like, you know, people would actually write the synopsis of the movie instead of the actual play? Or you think there were like kids who were writing that from Gargoyles and be like, actually, Macbeth is still alive in modern era. <laughs> Macbeth is still alive. He looks like Sean Connery, wears a trench coat, and goes around fighting nocturnal creatures that defend New York at night. <laughs> and has a fuck with a woman named Demona who turned. Uh, Brandon like, Kilgore says at that long haired creepy guy, have you still got the ambition to make an RPG game based on you and Decker Shadow in Japan for the Godzilla thing? Game I would like to. I would like to. Right now, Game it's just a matter of time, so. Gamera. Mothra. Masuda. No, yeah. like, uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra month was done in Mississippi. Yes. Gamerathon mm -hmm. 3 was done in Japan. And that's about the, the best thing I can say about it. <laughs> You know how there's a bunch of snapping turtles now in Animal Crossing? 
that Decker. Well, I basically have been collecting them and I keep naming them Gamera. I go, this one's Gamera 1, Gamera 2, <laughs> Revenge of Gamera. They're like, why do you have so many turtles? I gotta have as many as Gamera movies there is. And I don't think I've covered them all yet. Well, there's the eight uh, Showa era ones, but the eighth one isn't necessarily its own movie. It's just a clip show of the previous ones. So get seven yeah. turtles and then chop them into bits and make one more turtle out of them. Franken Gamera! <laughs> and then no, there's was... the three uh, Heisei eras, but then there's the fourth Heisei era that technically was an indie film and not really made by the original creators, but it was still considered sort of canon. Decker but really. It's, it's find also this movie. something that you can, just cannot find because it's like the holy grail of Gamera movies. It exists, but it's like you have to find the director and get him to get show you the movie. <laughs> and it's like the lost episodes of Doctor Who. They existed. Good luck finding them. Although <laughs> I think they've got like a good amount of them in a BBC at South Africa studio. And then there yeah. was Gamera the Brave, which was supposed to be the start of a trilogy, but wasn't. Only made one. And yeah. then there was the Gamera teaser for a return of Gamera that never happened and i'm still oh waiting i need to collect more turtles then <laughs> <laughs> oh oh honey. i want oh. more camera there was also the uh well there was the we cut you talked about this already but uh remember in the modern gamera where they gave it the darker and edgier upgrade where gamera was like landing in the middle of a crowded street and sent people flying and then people were like dying everywhere. <laughs> like, uh, Vance MC oh, go ahead. Vance MC just goes, Decker, review the Doctor Who movie. Okay, first off, you're supposed to spell out the word doctor when you're mentioning Doctor Who. <laughs> Number two, Decker, are you fully aware of the Doctor Who mythos before the, re before the reboot ever Hell happened? Hell no. Decker, would you like someone who knows the who knows the mythos before the reboot? I I watched every Dragon Ball episode other than most of GT. I'm I'm seeing his the expression he's making right now, Cat, and it I'm like, wow, months. I haven't seen that face since Power Rangers. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna force him to watch all the all the freaking Doctor Who's. I'm just gonna be like, do you want the TLDR? I can give you the TLDR. <laughs> Anyway. And that is how Decker decided that he was never going to review the Doctor Who movie. Uh, spe <laughs> speaking of uh, Gamerathon 3 in Japan and the event that it was, uh, the, writers of, the writer of Batman and Robin has recently apologized for Batman and Robin. They helped awaken, awaken so many gay men. <laughs> so, Akiva Goldsman recently apologized for Batman and Robin and which uh, I have marked down was the infamous 1997 film that arguably made Doug Walker's career. Bat nipples, bat credit card. <laughs> uh, the quote from Akiva, it's taken from the article. As for Batman and Robin, that one just confused me. I mean, we didn't mean for it to be bad, I swear. Nobody was like, this will be bad. I mean, here's the irony. There was a reel that was put together halfway through filming where it actually looked dark in an interesting way. It just is what it is, and I'm sorry. I think we're all sorry. So basically, a lot of meddling. So I'm. I mean, if he's, there's a lot that happens between writing and film, directing and filming and editing and post production. A lot of things can change a lot. Like Halloween, for instance. Like it was being shown in screenings relatively early, where people were like, "It's kind of sucks ass." But it had no music at the point that point. And when they added the music, everyone was like, hey, actually, this is like the greatest horror movie ever made. And then I'm there like, actually, it's kind of boring, but it has good music. Uh -huh. And then everyone's like, fuck you, Decker. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like Decker's um, first Halloween review got put posted on like, I forget what, it, what, what you said it was, but you said it was posted on a Halloween fan site. And, like, there was, like, this mass revolt on that site's comment sections where everybody was bad-mouthing Decker <laughs> for not liking the first Halloween movie. It's an acquired taste. It's like red wine. I like red wine. 
I was gonna say I actually like red I like wine. Am I the only one here who hates red wine? Or wine? I okay. guess so. I mean, but so yeah, it's like I was gonna say something. Pinot Noir is okay as well. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll just drink my water. It's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did drink my knockoff Dr Pepper earlier. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely like you. Know, I don't feel like the writer really needs to apologize for Batman and Robin, no. especially, especially when... like, with how like if you take the basic concept of Batman and Robin. If you were to direct it differently, film it differently, edit it differently, do different post production, have a different set of music, maybe some different actors, even mm -hmm. uh, you could get a very different feeling movie. I mean, did they write the bat credit card? That's what most I likely did. Well, it would have made sense back in the whenever that movie came out. Um, Creed Nation just dropped forty ninety four ninety nine and said, "Like, I'm, I'm just trying Who's... to think how to do the bat credit card as an interesting and dark bit." Would, would you like that card? Oh, it's you a commentary it. on late stage capitalism. We're still in late stage capital. Do you, do you want me to read the lovely little note that we just got received with money? Okay. Okay. Uh, Creed Nation dot, dropped four ninety nine. The Doctor Who series started in two thousand and five as a continuation, not a reboot. Cat. I've also been following the series for over a decade. The problem I've been following it since the womb, according to my mother. I just couldn't think of the word <laughs> continuation. So I said reboot. Yeah, shame. Reboot. On you, however, shame. Pinky shame? and the Brain should get a film. Oh yes. Uh, animated or live action. <laughs> I would actually like a uh, live action with CGI Pinky and Brain. Realistic yeah. Rack CGI or cartoon CGI? Cartoon CGI. Okay, you got you. The ninjas will not come after you in the night tonight. Okay. But you no, can't I'll... have realistic rat Pinky and have it really work. That's going to be nightmare material. That's going to yeah. be. Do you remember those uh, anti-smoking commercials where they had the people in the rat costumes? You know, to show. No, Smoking it was what? Like, Weed. No, it was a, so, no. Uh, it was an anti-smoking campaign where they had humans in rat costumes going, "Hey, this is what the stuff happens to us rats." Blah blah blah. And like one episode, it showed, "Oh, I got a tumor from you smoking so much. Secondhand smoke is bad." Just no. It was from the anti-smoke. Was this the thing in Florida? <laughs> Decker. Anyway, speaking of nightmares that we will continue to have, uh, Jurassic World 3 Dominion will be the... It will be, according to producer Frank Marshall, the start of a new era. Cat's I, I... not here right now. Talk to the plushy kid. Excerpt from an article on Collider. Jurassic World Dominion is not being planned as the conclusion to the franchise. It's the start of a new era, he says, after an effusive no when asked if Jurassic World 3 was being envisioned as an endpoint. The dinosaurs are now on the mainland amongst us. The mainland. It means they're no longer on Isla Morta or Isla du Isla whatever. They're in North America. Which is mainland. <laughs> The mainland. What are we on, Pangea? Hawaiians call, no, Hawaiians call, nor, you know, the, the United States, the mainland. So maybe they're going for that. Now, if you need me, the and cat will be will taking my... And they will be for quite some time, I hope, he added, alluding to future stories set in this new normal world where humans have to share the globe alongside dinosaurs. Uh, I'm just... Oh, sorry. <laughs> um... Motorcycle US dropped two bucks a while back. Will Creepy or Decker review Rock and Rule? Didn't Decker, didn't Creepy already review that? I think Creepy yeah. did do Rock and Rule. Creepy, we're not going to have a plush off right now. We know I'd win. <laughs> if my plushies were all over there. <laughs> so yeah, Jurassic World 3, I was thinking like, you know, at least that's going to be it. Nope. Mm-mm. I mean, so technically, Jurassic World and... wasn't a reboot. It takes place after the previous three Jurassic Park movies. But mm -hmm. it's enough of a different setting that it's like, okay, effectively, you can think of it like a reboot to the series. It's 
a new start to a new story. The old stuff doesn't make it matter the most. It's still relevant, but not. It's like side character relevant. And they're like, nah, this Jurassic World shit's just gonna keep going, man. We're gonna keep doing it, man. The it most sword, it's never. gonna be an entire fucking cruise ship, man. And that's just something you're gonna have to live with. So, and they got the idea to start doing this with the third movie. So, forget the first two movies. I know Decker would like to. But then we have Jurassic Park 3, 4, and 5, which is a new trilogy, which is not how that usually works. <laughs> Oh, oh, Teddy Ruxpin just went, Creepy's plush is an elder god, he wins. I go, no, he doesn't. One second. Okay. <laughs> oh, alrighty then. This just, this, this is happening. So, yeah. That's about it for the movie news, though. Well, I mean, there, there was some other news. I was just like, you know, I want to have... I wanted to focus on less uh, things and try and have a little more discussion going on. I don't know if it's working or not. Audience. Oh! Chibi Chibi Thulu. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's not the only one with an elder god in his room. Well, yeah, but I have an elder god and a tiger. Say hello to Manokuma. What's the next Jurassic Universe? So they went from Jurassic Park to Jurassic World, and now Jurassic World is going to be... The world is Jurassic, so... I don't know, dinosaurs in space? <laughs> hey! Actually, Sorry, I Doctor have... did that, too. There was, yeah, a, Jurassic... there was an episode of New Who. <laughs> no, Jurassic Park isn't part... But Jurassic Park could do dinosaurs in space. So I'm going to put this plushie away. Jurassic no Moon. Do. Dinosaurs are on the moon and they're planning to invade. Wouldn't they be on Mars better? It's more habitable. Moon! Time the moon! <laughs> but we destroyed the moon! Did you not see double? <laughs> they, did, they didn't destroy it, they just broke the moon. <laughs> they just fucked up the world so bad that it broke the moon. How do you do that? Jurassic Galaxy? <laughs> Jurassic Galaxy Quest, the crossover no one wanted. Dan Washburn says Jurassic jumped the shark. I think uh, I did that in the, in the fourth movie. Jurassic the, Shark. They did that. It was the. What is the dinosaur decker? Hmm? The one in the giant fish tank? Mosasaurus? That one. See? Shark. They already did it. <laughs> Jurassic Porn. Um. But yeah, there's still a, some other little news of one thing that's kind of jumped up out of nowhere that's caught a lot of people's attention was the showcase in the uh, Summer Game Fest, the first showcase of Unreal Engine 5. Now, did either oh. of you watch that? No. Because I forgot to. <laughs> Is it bad? Is it good, or are you shaming us? I am shaming you. Oh, okay, yeah. It was, uh, it's funny because it came after the, uh, you know, the Xbox, the, th the thing, last episode of Live and Wired, where I couldn't remember what the hell the damn thing was called. And this episode you can't remember either. No, oh, I know, it's, it's, it's like as soon as I'm going to be not on camera and not live streaming, I'm going to remember it. Mm -hmm. but but then he's going to call me and complain Microsoft about how he forgot. Show event. That, the one where they're like, hey, tune in because we're going to show you the first gameplay from Xbox Series X. And people watched it and technically they got that, but they were all like, it wasn't enough and it wasn't like sitting down and playing the game. So fuck you, you lied to us. Uh, motorcycle and US. Decker, when get the game play as a shark? I already did. Has it? Man eater. I'm uh, I'm currently level thirteen or fourteen. So how many bodies does that make? <laughs> well, I've, I've been eating a lot of alligators. Those motherfuckers pissed me off because they kept fucking with me while I was still a little tiny fish. Uh, I repeat, <laughs> if you could ever find the old, P I don't remember which PlayStation game it is, but there is a Jaws the movie PlayStation game. You play as the shark. 
Oh, Your yeah, whole job. If, I, if I remember right, it didn't run very well. <laughs> <laughs> the controls are weird, but they say the controller like if you, if you were a shark swimming. I go, what shark? Did you get a shark? To do? <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> hand the PlayStation controller to a great white shark and ask him, tell us what, what feels comfortable to you. <laughs> <laughs> Program it, boys. Oh. <laughs> I know, it's always weird whenever you're playing a game that you play an animal and they go we used realistic movement with an animal I'm like you animate it and the controls will be the same so so uh, yeah and the Unreal 5 demo it's like everyone saw the Xbox Series X gameplay and they were like ah it wasn't as good as what I wanted piece of shit and then uh -huh. the Unreal Engine 5 demo tech demo comes out running in real time and they are sure to say several times almost as if they were paid a lot of money to say this a lot uh mentioned to everyone hey this stuff right here it's running on a playstation 5 uh-huh and it's yeah it looked really damn good uh -huh. like, let me see if i can I'm going to try and bring up this. Uh, yes, I want to open the link. That's why I'm clicking on it. No, he just wants to stare at it and enjoy those combinations of letters and numbers. Do, 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 do. Turn on screen share. Actually, on Decker screen might share. enjoy that. Turn mm. on screen share like I keep click. I can click this turn on screen share button all I want. It's not doing anything. It's haunted. So then, uh, I'll just bring this over here, <laughs> so <laughs> the viewers can see it. So uh, I was gonna say, Decker, when you were saying over and over again, like they, they were played on a PlayStation Five, it just reminds me of E3, where they were like, "This is what the Xbox One, this is what the Xbox One is gonna be like," and like at the stations right. where they were playing it. <laughs> and not only did they break often, they weren't even Xboxes; they were just high-end PCs. Yeah, that's that's uh, one thing. It's like tech demos and. Uh, little previews and such you gotta keep into that's like they said running on playstation 5 is like what exactly does that mean does that mean they have a playstation 5 that is complete final spec and that's running on it they've built one already and this is how it's gonna work or do they mean that it uh is running on a computer spec'd out approximately like a PlayStation 5. Like These on a, des a desktop hardware. That's the probably the at the same time, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are both supposed to have certain technologies in them that are a little bit beyond what is available commercially for desktop PCs right now. So would that be a plus or minus in this situation? <laughs> Although the little uh, the little graphics that you're showing me, oh, I have seen this. Someone showed it to me and made happy noises. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, I'm going to put those are really nice detailed statues. I'm going to poke them out. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very nice looking little uh, tech demo. It was running evidently at uh, 1440p at 30 frames a second. Which means what in American? Uh, better than 1080p, not as good as 4K. And 30 okay. frames a second is like the minimum frame rate that you would want a game to be running at. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Certain tech things I don't understand. Which is why, you know, EDF, my favorite game ever, commonly runs at like four frames a second. <laughs> and you play it religiously. Yes. Pretty much. I'd be impressed if EDF could maintain a stable a stable 30. It tends to run up to 60, though, which lets you notice the frame drops even harsher. I think you'd be happy if it just uh, got 10 Don't frames humans give more XP? Yes, humans give more XP in Maneater, but they also increase your threat level, and hunters will come after you if you eat too many people. See, what he's doing is smart. He's eating the small things that, don't, that make people don't deem him a threat. Well, I, uh, the hunters themselves also don't give quite as much experience as the beachgoers, I think. Uh, John Smith says, I'm still waiting for Decker to review Pitch Black. <laughs> it's very uh, dark. 
Very dark. I, I, that was my Requiem <laughs> review, damn it. Oh. So, yeah, uh, an excerpt from the article about Unreal Engine 5. Epic has been iterating on the Unreal Engine to help developers save time and work. Rather than build and program individual polygons and reshaping environments after small changes, developers should be able to slide in high-quality textures or photogrammetry scans to mimic real-world imagery. It's right in line with Unreal Engine's current use in Hollywood studios, most notably Disney's streaming hit The Mandalorian. Sweeney also said that, like previous versions of Unreal, the new engine could also benefit smaller developers and development teams and studios, as it can more effect- efficiently and affordably produce top-tier graphics than if they tried to produce their own engines. See, when I hear all this, I'm just thinking about how quote-unquote realistic they're going to get, and then I'm like, oh crap, a more blo- motion blur in Uncanny Valley and me being unable to play the game because motion sickness, it's a thing I'm really recently rediscovering. Ah, yes. <laughs> You ever tried VR? VR? Try what? VR. You keep cutting out. VR. VR. V. Ah. Oh, VR. VR. No, <laughs> I haven't. I actually do know someone who actually is a scientist in the concept of motion, in the whole motion sickness thing, what causes this, preventatives, blah, blah, blah. And they actually were going to sign up and work for a company that does VR stuff pointing out that when VR was being worked on, there were no women in the testing groups. It was all men. And it, and women were getting, are, it's been shown that women are getting more sick while playing VR than men were. Because well, it was all a set, discrepancy there. Yeah, it was all that's set up a, for men, and there were no women. And well, she, it's, I, actually, at least that's not quite as bad as, what was that one, uh, was that one drug meant to improve a lady's libido that was tested like 98% on men? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It's just like real crap. Like it, it's like the, the, the testing group was already far too small for a proper test. And it consisted mostly of men. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. But it was like, they explained to me like the process of how they did the, how the stuff was and how they were. It was basically, this is what I wrote to convince the people to hire me. <laughs> and it was like, it was really interesting. I go, does that also explain why a lot of video games make me make more women motion sickness than men? And they go, yes. Also because they're idiots who don't understand the concept of be, have making an adjustable field of view and quick keep relying on motion blur. <sighs> oh, motion. The motion blur makes things look real and high no, quality. Not. No, no, no. I start, you know that game Killing Floor I kept recommending to you? Yeah, I'm just going to stop recommending it to you because I found out that the creators of that game are top-notch elite asshats. Oh. Because they're very well aware of the problem that a lot of people are having with the motion blur, the, la- the tinnitus-induced recreations, and, you know, the horrible F- FOV. And the creators were like, yes, we are aware of these things. No, we will not fix it because it is part of the experience. <laughs> and then I, then I was reading forums and there were a lot of asshats in the forums being like, well, it's not our, they shouldn't be able to compensate for your genetic and your, your genetic issues. I, yeah. I've never really wanted to it, go through a forum and strangle a guy so much. And it's, it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I remember I was, uh, I, I got EDF 2017 and I popped it in my Xbox while my Xbox was still working. And I realized that it had another aiming mode in it that I had never mm-hmm. used. Because the, the game normally plays normal dual stick kind of stuff, like EDF yeah. 5 and EDF Iron Rain, Common. and most every shooting game out there right now. But the EDF 2017 had an alternate shooting and aiming mode where it's like the left stick was the only stick you used to move around and turn left and right. Tank control? And then it the game automatically shot up or down if the enemy was in that direction. And mm-hmm. you just run around kind of like that and shoot in that manner. And I was like, you know, that's less precise, but if you can't use two sticks at the same time, that's actually a nice option. I wish they still had that option in there. Oh, Happy Canuck just pointed out something. Tripwire made Killing Floor. That is true. And they also made the game Monster Hunter that Decker's played. Hey, Decker, how's the field of view in that? In what? <laughs> Man, uh, man eater. Uh, man eater. Uh, the thing that annoys me the most in man eater is the glue that is the ocean surface. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad the blood graphics look like that too in Killing Floor. 
I, uh, they, they, you get to the top and they want to have the thing where you have the fin going and you're moving it around as a shark and that's nice and all. Yeah. But if you want to awesome. swim down, you can't just look down and swim. You have to press square. Now, pressing square only has the effect of making you swim down or swim down from the ocean surface, but it also only does it for like three feet. Oh, geez. You can just keep thing. swimming down with square, but you gotta keep smacking square to make a shark go blip, 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 blip. <laughs> uh, And I'm like, why can't I just thing. swim forward and then press square if I want to angle it down? And like, keep doing that. And then X, it's used to jump or swim up. Like, blip, 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 blip. If you go to the bottom of the ocean and then you press X, your shark moves weird. They go... Blip, 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 blip. <laughs> But they only go a couple of feet. You can't hold the button and keep going. <laughs> and I'm like, why is it? Why is it like this? Why? Because uh, the shark programmed the game. Didn't you know that, Decker? Dun, 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 dun. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> As Josh Washburn says, it just works. It just works. <laughs> so yeah, the, the thing with uh, Unreal Engine Five and uh, the Nanites dynamic LOD that's really exciting. What's that? Uh, yeah. the, the way Nanite works in Unreal Engine 5 is that it's, uh, you have the model, like whatever yeah. it is, like you, you, put, you put in the model with how many millions or billions of polygons are on it. But yes. based on where, based on its distance from the camera, it's, it determines, okay, this chunk of the model is going to be represented by one pixel. So that chunk of the model will be represented by one polygon and so on and so forth for the rest of it. So the further away they are, the less polygons they use because the less pixels they'll take up. And, and will cause less strain on the system. But right. visually, it won't really seem like there's less detail. So it's a very smooth transition for level of detail. Like, as many points of, a, of a distance on the z-axis there can be, there are levels of detail that it just smoothly transitions through. Dynamically. Dynamically. Which I think is pretty damn awesome. <laughs> I actually think that sounds interesting. It kind of reminds me of like what they did for Spyro. Remember that? Yeah. But like more fancy. Yeah, fancy. It's, 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 it's like one of the... It, it's the first engine I've looked at and been like, huh, they might have actually solved level of detail pop-in issues. Which is something that is a thing every gamer makes jokes about. Like, ever since games have been 3D, pop-in has been a thing. Either that or the entire world is just loaded in and there's, like, nothing else to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, Where no, are the people? there's no pop-in in, uh, like, what the hell? I'm thinking of some N64 games, like, Tetrisphere. There's no pop-in in Tetrisphere. That's because it's just a ball that, that you throw tetroids at. That's that's the game. Yeah. Tetraminos? Tetraminos. Te I like tetroids. It sounds more like hemorrhoids. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then they have Lumen for the enhanced lighting? dynamic lighting. Which, Ooh. lighting is a big thing in the upcoming generation because everyone's talking about ray tracing. Which, ray tracing is a very impressive technology. It's really cool. We can do it in real time now, sort of. But it's and also very straining on current systems. And it's probably not going to be that easy to do on a PS5 or Series X either. Yeah. Lumen, on the other hand, takes a lot of the good parts of ray tracing. The bounce lighting, the ability to have dynamic lighting that is just as good at... So, so that you don't have to use baked in light maps anymore. Like yeah, you can actually that. have all of that in there. And Lumen, while it doesn't have all of the fancy effects of ray tracing, like I don't think you can make a working mirror with Lumen. No. You have bounce lighting, but you don't have full reflections. But yeah. it still gives you that bounce lighting and is a lot easier on the GPU. Which is good. So all of that is very nice. Very nice. Mm. Uh, Vance Mick is asking, Creepy, how do you feel about Scoob? I 
I'm confused about it. <laughs> I liked it overall. Some parts were good. Some parts, the parts that were good were really good. The parts that were bad were not so good. There was one part in particular that was very, very bad, and that part's name starts with a B. King Will 0320 on Mixer says, "Don't read chat if you're in the KKK." Okay, read the chat. I'm not racist. <laughs> Good for you, Denver. <laughs> Dang. Uh, this just in: man with a decent human being. Ah. Think of decent human beings. <laughs> Mole person saying the goldfish made me throw up. I think I ate too much. You don't don't try to do man eater in reality. It doesn't work. You can't just eat and eat and eat and then become super powerful and then just eat bigger things. And it's like I Katamari think, with violence. I like Katamari with violence. I like violence with Katamari. It's already violent. You're rolling people up into a giant ball. Well, just because half the that. people I roll, well, actually all the people I roll up scream bloody murder. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think about it too much because I got that happy little music playing while it's going on. That's the point. Remind, Decker, have you ever played the game that was also made by the creator of uh, of uh, Katamari, uh, Nobby Nobby Boy? Or uh, there's another one. It's a new I, one that came did, out. Did, did, was Nobby Nobby Boy only in Japan? No, Nobby Nobby Boy is also in America. On what system? Oh, okay. A uh, PlayStation. Oh. One of them. I've never had any PlayStation. <laughs> you never... I think PlayStation 4. Because it also had internet access and was like, you're supposed to eat things and get longer and then send the measurements to girl who gets longer. And apparently it was like, in real time, all the things I was collecting, it was going to different... The strength that from all she was collecting was going to different planets. And they've got beyond Pluto now. Oh, yeah. And then there's <laughs> another one which just recently came out last year. Which involves eating things and pooping them out, I think. No, wait. Ew. No, it's not that. I don't remember what it is. Uh, John Washburn actually wonders, what is Creepy's favorite game? EDF. <laughs> now, that's me. <laughs> I do have one, but I don't know if I should say it. It's actually two favorite games. And it's really more like two favorite trilogies. Uh, first favorite tri first one is uh, Legacy of Cain. I love the Legacy of Cain series. What That's series? Mm -hmm. The second one is Jack and Daxter. Also a good game. <laughs> as, in the, as in Jack... Jack and Daxter, the precursor Legacy, Jack 2, and Jack 3. Hmm. Um, I remember oh, playing yeah, the hell out of the first one, but then I started the second one, and it was just so different. I was like, that's not enough. <laughs> it, 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 it was a bit of a curve for me when I first started playing it, but then I was like, I actually this. This is a lot of fun. Um, I remember like the third game actually snuck up on me. Uh, I think it was in 2003 three when I finally got to play the no 2004 when I finally got to play uh Jack Jack 2 and then I played uh Precursor Legacy in 2002 then I played uh Jack 2 in 2004 and I think it was in the even though it came out in 2003 and then I think it was in the November of 2004 I was at work and I just so have, and I, I was like, that's funny. I'm thinking about Jack and Jack, you know, the the Jack games. I really like those. And I was like, why am I thinking about those? I looked up and I listened closely. There was a promo for it playing at Walmart where I worked on the television hanging above my head. <laughs> and then I stopped and I was like, wait a minute, there's a third game. It's coming out this weekend. Why have I not been informed? This is for the internet. <laughs> It was before. It was. It was before I had like regular internet access. Yeah, I, I was still on dial-up at the time. That severely limited my internet browsing. So I think it was the following Thursday or Friday. I went to the the mall 
which was like an hour away from where I lived because I lived way out in the sticks and everything was far away. Mm-hmm. But uh, I drove there and I was like, I'm getting this game. I don't care how much it costs. I am getting this freaking game. So I bought it. I took it home and I started playing it. And within a few days, I had, in like a day or two, I had it beat. Yay! Like this was, you know, including time I was at works and therefore not able to play games. So, but uh, uh, yeah, I really also love got a question, example. sort of related. Southern Yankee asks, "What was everyone's job before YouTube personality?" <laughs> oh, that's going to be fun to explain. <laughs> so I stocked <laughs> groceries. I did so for ten dollars an hour, forever. Because Kroger told me, hey, yeah, you might have started at $10 an hour five years ago, and you've been working here for five years with no raise, but that's because you're part-time, and that's the maximum you can make it part-time. I'm like, but sir, for these five years, I've been working 40-hour weeks. And they're like, yeah, but that's part-time. No, that's not. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I pretty much just was eventually like, okay, uh, what are... uh, I, I think of the future, and I was thinking, like, where am I going to be in five years? In five more Miserable. years of this. Still making tell- dollars an hour, and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to afford my <laughs> bills at that point. Because inflation is still a thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I just absolutely detested everything about just working at Kroger, doing just basic labor. And I not being able to be creative at all. So... <laughs> I decided, okay, forget it. I'm just going to put everything. I, 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 I actually straight up quit my job and <laughs> just concentrated on YouTube. A terrible idea. Yeah. But it seems to have finally worked out. Seems to. Hey. <laughs> but I do not recommend that strategy for anyone because even though it, I eventually did get to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm making more than I was at Kroger. Uh, to get to that point took quite a while, and all the time waiting, trying to get there, there it, I felt like you know there was more I could have done with my show if I had more funds, which I could have had if I had a job. <laughs> you want to go next, Cat? Might as well. Although mine's kind of long. So technically, my first job. Okay, so I wanted to be an artist. I took digital design, which teaches you computer graphics. Uh, magazine layouts, et cetera, et cetera. And see, I never really had a job job per se because due to a medical condition, AKA back injury when I was 13 years old and my massive anxiety and depression, according to the government and my therapist, I was legally declared not eligible for a job. I am basically being run on the government money that I get so little of fun. Uh, uh, yeah. And so I have been technically an artist for over 10 plus years because since I am not making this much a month, I am le- I can legally be allowed to do that. I just can't have more than a, I don't remember the exact amount in my bank account or they cut my SSI off, which I need. It's usually about two grand or so. Yeah. So I can't have more than that. Sometimes they one, don't. So it depends on the state too. Yeah. Oh. Florida's weird. So it's like, <laughs> I've always. Saving money? For what? expenses? How dare. You should it's be only... living hand to mouth. Yeah. It's weird because I'm like, I I rent. I live with my parents. I rent. I pay the bills. At least two of them. And it took them for they actually tried to cut me off of it because they're like, Oh, she she claims she's an artist. I go, Do you know I'm an artist on commission? I don't have solid job whatsoever. And this was like Five years ago it's like so i've always been an artist and i did youtube for a while i made my first hundred off youtube and then i stopped getting money from youtube for um reasons I don't know what that was like <laughs> oh. oh yeah so i and i don't make money off youtube now because youtube does not deem me worthy mm-hmm. because i make speed paint videos which are short fast videos therefore my watch time is short yeah so I'm an artist on commission. I sell stuff on Redbubble. I have butt heads with so many legal teams for some of my art being sold on Redbubble, which copyright is a pain in the ass. Decker, if you want to use that as a segue, you get my permission. <laughs> uh, did I get, did we? Oh, wait, that's right. I didn't write that in the thing. That's it. Yeah. 
if you want to use that as a segue. But yeah. so I've always been an artist. I've technically always been a YouTuber. I've been a YouTuber for like since 2003. Feels old. No, wait, not you 2003. Were YouTuber, you were a YouTuber before YouTube was a thing? No, it was not 2003. It was 2010. Two, yeah, 2010 is when I started being a YouTuber. Sorry. I've been an artist professionally for like 10 some odd years. Paycheck to paycheck and by paycheck to paycheck. The very few commi commission me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Creepy, for hiring me. By the way, you're better than my Xbox. Who was a nightmare? Yeah, I've heard stories about this guy. Uh, just just so everyone knows just how little money uh, Kat gets, uh, she did the title card here for exposure. Yeah. Because I'm a jerk. No, I didn't, I, I didn't want to. It was artwork I did like last year. I didn't I didn't have an issue showing it off. I yeah. work for Diva. That's 30 some odd dollars a month. So, And then I get the reg regular commissions randomly and then the money I get from Redbubble and Public, But they don't give me money unless I make more than $20. I think Bowen's son just flipped me off. How dare he! <laughs> I kind of deserve yeah, it, but... Um... So, anyone who think, makes you think that artist life is glamorous, no, it's only glamorous if you're popular enough. <laughs> I'm miserable and alone and I could tell you stories about my ex-boss that I had, because I did work for another comic company for a while before working with Creepy. I have at least two videos about him. Uh, son of Loki one oh, dropped three. five dollars, saying, "Hello, how is everyone doing?" Uh, we're, in the, we're in the middle of uh, answering a question as to what our jobs were before YouTube. Yeah, I have only two videos. I've threatened to make a third one if I get enough. It's basically I call it my horror. I've never got paid well, by got my like last twenty-four box. minutes of show left in two articles. Ah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Oh. I'll be Creepy. quiet. I was what did you do? Okay, uh, let's see. After high school, uh, I was in college for a bit. Uh, I stopped going to college for a little while because I was burned out. And I, like, I was in for like two and a half years at a community college, which was where most of the people that I knew that if, from my high school, they went to a local community college instead of a university. And that was where I went. Um, I worked at Walmart for a year. I went back to college this time to a university. Uh, then I got out of, then I, after college, I went to back to Walmart because that was the only place that was hiring at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. I had tried to, I tried my hand at being a grease monkey that didn't go well. I had no aptitude for it whatsoever. The only reason I took the job is because I was working for a friend of mine and his dad and, uh, I desperately did not want to go back to Walmart, but after like a summer working there, I was like, I'm going back to Walmart, unfortunately. So that happened. I worked at Walmart for three and a half years, I think it was. Let's see. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, three and a half years. And then um, I was a cook in a restaurant for about a year. And then after that, I worked in a hospital okay. in the laundry room. And that was the job that almost broke me, actually. That was the job where I was working like, uh, I was working eight hour shifts, but I had to get up at five. I had to get up at three in the morning to be at work on time because my shift started at five in the morning and I only get, and I had like a half hour lunch break and I was also the only person doing any of the heavy lifting. They had two pe they had like two to three people who were doing all of the folding, whereas I was doing all of the pickup, sorting, and uh, actual washing and drying. So I did all of the jobs that required the heavy lifting, and I worked there for a while. And that was the last nine to five job I had. Like I was so tired when I came home from work every day that I would shower. I would soak in the tub for a while because my muscles would be seizing up. Then I would, I would soak so that they would relax. Then I would take a shower because I was filthy. And then I would go straight to bed because I was too tired to do anything. And I was sleeping like 10, 12, you know, like 10, 11 hours or something like that. And then I would just be so tired every day, and it was just that over and over again. Uh, after that job, I started doing internet reviews, and I started writing more, and 
that was when I really started to feel like I was doing something creative, you know, yeah. I was, but I was also very, very depressed at that point because the job in the laundry room was like when I was really at my lowest point, when I was really, really depressed because I had stopped working at Walmart, which was a job I had hated. I didn't, I didn't love the job where I was a cook in a restaurant, but I liked cooking. So, you know, it was, you know, like it wasn't great, but it wasn't, it wasn't, great but it wasn't as bad as my job in retail and then i went to a work in a laundry room which the only thing about that was that i wasn't there for very, as long as i was at any of the other jobs i had so yeah i was at a really low point but doing internet view reviews and writing and so forth were really what kept me going after after i left my laundry room job and when i think about it i'm like yeah, I'm never going back to that again. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, John That's Washburn the- says, damn creepy. Besides Decker being your pal, you really seem to have had it rough. No, including that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motorcycle US said, damn guys, I've made more when I was doing street fights, by- street fights part-time. And this was in Waco, Texas. Not a big city by far. Then Doc Snake gave you four ninety nine. See, if we do our sympathy stories, we can't <laughs> In the arms you, of an angel. I think you were saying that you were trying to say something earlier and weren't getting, uh, it wasn't accepting your super chat. So it seems to have accepted your money. I don't know if you intended to have a message with that, though, because sometimes it eats uh, those. If you do, just put it in the regular chat and see if some look, one of us start looking for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now two guys who watch movies is actually wanted to contact me about my a, art. That one time it was cool. just completely like every time the... Uh, commenter was trying to post their message, be it in super chat, it would take the money but not post the message, and then they, it would just their message would never show up in the regular chat. I don't know what's up with YouTube sometimes. I really don't. Like if there's a word that you think it might not like that you're trying to say, you could try and work yeah. around it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Although it is weird now. Like Decker and I have been working together for a while. It still strikes me as kind of surreal that you know, like when we do live streams or something else. There isn't a long row of people begging for my demise. <laughs> Still a few. They, they, they got to show up. got to yeah. no, keep appearances going. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Hensel just donated $100. Seriously, we need a noise for that. What, what? Uh, so, I, thank it, you it didn't show up on my side yet. And I was like, what are you talking about? Are you t-? ended up at the... <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's the noise for that. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very Decker much, can, Christopher. Decker can pay for his Thank dental you. bills. So what, what what did they say? Did they have anything to say? What was the... Uh, Thank you for a great Saturday. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, the, the next dental bill is like uh, 800 some odd. That's coming on, on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a drill and fill on several teeth. Oh, don't call oh. it a drill and fill. What else is it called? I don't know, but it sounds like some weird thing and I don't like it. They're going in my mouth with a drill and they're going, and I'm going to have to sit there like, ah, and then they're going to be like, and then they're going to be like shining a light and stuff. And I'll be like, and then I'll be like, hey, there you go. Give us a thousand dollars. Yeah. I, 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 Decker, Decker, I, I, as much as I love watching you pantomime, Kitty. Ah, uh, Kitty. Kitty was licking his face. Kitty gets full screen. <laughs> Everyone loves the kitty now. <laughs> this is the audience, what the audience wants. Come in here. <laughs> like talking to a baby, like, go there, come on. There's your Uncle Decker. Go look at Uncle Becker. You don't like being on camera. She really doesn't like being on camera. <laughs> My oh. cat has finally figured out when I make loud noises in this room, don't come in. <laughs> She's like, because then she'll, because then she knows I will pick her up and show her to camera. <laughs> But yeah, we got the two two little uh, news articles left to go and 16 minutes. Oh, good. We might Woo! do over. Let's do those. Do those now. Do Why haven't you done those? Because we were talking about our sad past lives. Drill and fill sounds like a typical home. summer night in Wisconsin. I'm so God damn it. I was thinking it was a sex maneuver. I, I think that's what they. they Yes, we had that, yes. I had that same reaction <laughs> to when Kat told us, mentioned a blue snowball, and I was like, a blue snow job, and I was like, what? Blue, 
Blue Snowball. A Blue Snowball is the brand of my microphone, my new microphone. Oh, uh, okay, it. yeah. But she said Blue Snowball to me when she was talking about her microphone, and I was like, what is that? A very weird sex maneuver? I was like, do you use do you use blue Kool-Aid instead of cocaine? <laughs> this is Don't a side of the, this is a side of the great Blue Dini that I did not expect to see, although I should have considering that he has tentacles. <laughs> Don't Google what a blue snowball is. That isn't a microphone audience. We are not held responsible. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> do not hit the sleep gas. It doesn't really put you to sleep. Not the gas. It, it mm -hmm. just makes you very, very dumb. Although the dentist that my insurance allows me to use doesn't allow sleep gas. You're allowed pricks of pain no happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, the, the, the Novocaine no is like the lowest end... It's like, mm -hmm. this part here will not feel pain. Maybe. Yeah. Although then you still feel the scraping against your gums. Like, I don't feel pain. I feel discomfort. <laughs> yes. uh, but then there's uh, the, the, the gas. I can't remember what it's called. N-O. Uh, nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. Laughing, the, laughing the, gas. The laughing gas. Although it doesn't actually, it doesn't that's, that's actually the thing. make you laugh. Laughing gas of... is a sort of painkiller all over mm -hmm. not as much as you might think though but the amount of pain you feel from the dental work they're gonna do you're not gonna care about as much because you're really really high yeah, yeah. like um <laughs> i've had uh i've had novocaine before and i don't know if you know this but that's something that will actually stay in your system for several days and you might not have a good reaction to it and i don't mean just it might not numb you i mean you might be numbed, but it will stay in your body for several days, and it can make you feel fucked up. I did not know this. I went to the dentist because of uh, my abscessed tooth uh, back in 2016, and I finally had to have it pulled because everywhere else was telling me, okay, we're going to have to do like four surgeries and several thousand dollars worth of dental work. And I'm just like, yeah, you're bullshitting me. You're just trying to gouge me or at least get rid of me for whatever reason i'm like you know what i'm just gonna go to this cheap place that pulls teeth and have it yanked out and that'll be the end of it but they gave me novocaine and novocaine does not work well with my body i spent like in a day even after i was at the tooth was gone and my gum had healed because they can't pull it out while your gum is infected but after all of that i was still in bed for like 10 days because i was still sick as shit from that sh what they gave me because apparently they gave me the really really cheap Novocaine. Oof. But uh, I have had, I have had laughing gas before, and yes, that will make you very stoned, and it can also make you hallucinate. <laughs> but Marcus like a US dropped two dollars saying, "Decker, my insurance affords me morphine." Which always, oh, you have good insurance. Now that that <laughs> always reminds me of that little uh, bit with the uh, Power Ranger in the hospital bed. It's morphine time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we have articles, Decker. You yes. want to get these down and over yes. with before yeah. we're stuck here all night. <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted to mention that there was all the the the, the, the one that'll knock you out is the general anesthetic. Okay. Yeah. Which I'm not entirely sure what it is, but the point of it is I'm doing drugs. Anyway, it took us a while, but we finally got the joke. Let's get. Let's get to. Uh, the bedtime. That's yes. the, that's the YouTube news this uh, this oh, <laughs> this <for> week. <laughs> Among <laughs> YouTube's wellness and screen time tools exists reminders to take a break, a la Nintendo. No, oh, I switch. I don't want to take a play break. I want to play. Play. <laughs> My switch doesn't really do that. What is the? How well, much the 3DS did, did it a hell of a lot. I remember sure. 3DS did it, but. The Switch does... I don't remember the Switch doing it. Sometimes like, certain Nintendo games, like Nintendo-specific games, they'll be like, hey, you want to take a break? You've been playing for a while. I'm like, shut the fuck up! I don't know if it's yet to do that to me. Oh, well, damn. <laughs> uh, and now a new break reminder will be joining the fray. The dreaded time for bed. Excerpt I've from already... the article. Now, with bedtime reminders, YouTube says you can set a... Set, 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 you can set specific times to stop watching videos and, you guessed it, go to bed. The company writes in a blog post, you set start and end times in your settings, including whether or not you want to prompt to interrupt a video or to wait until the video is over. 
you'll be able to dismiss or snooze the reminder. I hate it. <laughs> you could also just set an alarm on your phone. Also, mm -hmm. a thing you can do. Or an alarm on your alarm if you don't have a smartphone. Very true. Or if you have a computer, some computers nowadays, especially modern ones with Windows 10 and Windows 7, have alarms built in for you so you can set an alarm and go. Or there are websites dedicated to alarms. <laughs> I've got a few. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jordan so Carpenter says, Decker, on the day you get one million subscribers, what will you do to celebrate? Crossbow Indiana says he will obviously be on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Netflix, uh, uh, Southern Yankee goes, Netflix and Switch should say, you've been playing for a while. Come back after you have showered. No. That that would be an effective... Yeah. That would be a great way to get the... If you can figure enough, out a way to... Enough, the... enough uh, oh, shouldn't you take a break? It's like, hey, have you eaten today? Yeah, like... Dude, you've been watching anime boobs for three hours. Breath check. You need to brush your teeth. Like, <laughs> just ask. Sit up, it. Straight, <sighs> Sit up straight. I say as I'm hunched. <laughs> that I want is... to talk. Uh, we got nine minutes left. Cat, you want to talk about the copyright stuff, or we're we gonna just uh, go? I can talk about the copyright stuff. Hello, gonna go grab the copyright thing. Copyright. Uh, it's a favorite right to copy. <laughs> We don't My have it, so we're getting Copy. sued. Copyright law, oh yeah. I hate copyright law. <laughs> I, it's, 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 I don't mind it. Uh, no, this is not the what article I want. I don't want to talk about Disney suing an innocent little daycare. Mm. Uh, TLDR, Disney was about to sue a Florida daycare because they had Disney characters painted on their thing and Hannah Barbera found out and offered to paint their stuff for free. Yeah. Where is it? Mm. Uh, what's going on with Disney and Fanworks? There it is. <laughs> God damn it. Two guys who watch movies says, Can you imagine if your significant wore a t shirt that after 20 minutes flashed in neon, you've been going at it for quite a while? Would you like to take a break? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. This is, uh, what's going on with Disney and fan work? Uh, should I do a screen share or should I just read? Uh, I can do a screen share. I can do a screen share. I share the screen. Yeah, your there screen share works. I don't know why my screen share don't work. Because I offer a cake earlier. I don't know. Uh, recently, recently. <laughs> um. Recently, you may have received an email informing you that Disney has updated its terms of use, or you may have seen a discussion about Disney's terms of use and statements on Twitter around the May the 4th hashtag. So what's going on? Our legal team ha can't give you advice, but here's what they have to say, what Disney's terms mean for fans and fan works. Disney's terms of use can be found here. Direct English language here. As in, the t as in we're going to use eat simple terms. They govern the use of various unidentified Disney products, such as websites, software, applications, contests, and services. What does it mean? Well, although the scope is broad, Disney can't use terms of service to govern what people do out in the world. They can only govern, or what, govern what people do in Disney's platforms, such as websites, apps, softwares, and contests. Even if Disney would like to control what people do outside those spaces, they don't have the power out in the world. The usual rules of copyright, trademark, and fair use law apply. The part of this has attracted most attention in fandom circles in the second sentence, submissions, user-generated contests, DMCA, takedown notices. This is me. First, I may assert that you have no exception of compensation or in, for ideas or materials submitted to Disney. This is an important rule of thumb. Always be careful when submitting ideas or materials to anyone, not just Disney. Uh, 7B then refers to discuss user-generated content. It identifies UGC as content by users that Disney asks for or allows. See, that word allow makes me very suspicious. This refers to the content uploaded to Disney's platform, such as sites and such. What do Disney's terms mean when they say cover content uploaded to a third party platforms and triggered in I can't read. So... It's basically trying to explain that Disney cannot get on your ass for posting up fan work of um, that you post online. No matter how much they want to. 
There's a Dobby right here. <gasps> Hello, Kitty. <laughs> Dobby. Dobby. Guys, excuse me for just one second. I'm I'm hearing something. Hmm. Can I like, talk about the like, copyright issues I've ever had? All the copyright fights I've had with Disney. <sighs> I'm hoping everything's okay with Creepy. Same here. Uh, no, but it's but yeah, basically because Disney, like, Disney has got a infamous. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I've seen a lot of times where it's like they they uh, no, not, not Disney's not the only company to say try and fish for free art through saying, "Hey, fans of our stuff, how about you show us how great of fans you are by drawing this fun stuff? And maybe if you're lucky, we might even use it in some official capacity." Mm -hmm. Aren't you so lucky? Yeah. Uh, yeah but but Disney, Disney will sit there and say, "Hey, draw stuff for us. Every single one of the things you draw will be our property." There will be nothing that you can do with it. Yes. So if you've ever been on Tumblr, do you ever remember when Tumblr used to have nice, clean, crisp, no real filler, no real filters on your gifts, uh, gifts of Disney movies and stuff? Mm -hmm. Around the time when the first new Star Wars movie came out of the new one, name I can't remember. Uh, there was the Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. That one. Around the time when The Force Awakens happened, Disney decided to basically grab, go onto Tumblr and throw a lot of DCMA claims on a bunch of places that were making GIFs of movies. Now, this was... It's a finicky area, I understand. But, like, it was right after... It wasn't, like, when the movie was still in theaters. And they would also take down people who would do GIFs of already, you know, made-on-DVD movies. It, it's hard to explain... It's basically like they would try to claim that we were we were stealing their property because we're showing animated pictures of something. Right. That would fall very much in fair use simply for the fact that it's such a small portion that cannot yeah. possibly replace the full property. And especially it's a f potential effect on the market. No one's going to track down a million gifts to watch a silent color problem grainy ass version of this movie yeah but disney did that and did it to a lot of t disney based tumblers and like so that after that incident people would just like put filters on it to make sure no copyright hawks would come down on it like to hate because it makes the it ruins the lighting and makes it all look horrible to me yeah yeah and then oh john carpenter remembers that i'm glad you remember that and like i've had my own personal head bumps with disney i had around the fourth of july season this was a few years ago i decided to post up on redbubble a red white and blue design you know to buy for fourth of july it just happened so a fun fact when you're making t-shirts on redbubble they recommend doing circular patterns and like which are good on the human body so it doesn't distort too much i say with straight lines on my chest so i did a pattern that happened to be circular with red white and blue and white stars. If you can guess what Disney claimed my uh, art prod art was, you get a cookie. <laughs> yes, circular. star. No, circular with red, white, and blue and stars. Captain America shield. Ah. Uh. They were claiming that I was trying to steal artwork, do artwork of Captain America shield, and I stole it from them, which is not true. And Disney. Would and which was weird because Redbubble is infamous for people stealing artwork and stealing official like screen grabs from the movie, badly photoshop them and sell them as merch. Yeah, yeah. I made something from the ground up, was not no intent of trying to reference Captain America at all. I was just doing a radio pattern, had red, white, and blue, had a couple of white <laughs> stars, and Disney threw the hammer at me and it hurt. Which caused me to, and then like Disney has also been known to basically go like, "Hey, convention people, how are you doing here at Iris Valley? Y'all doing great? You artists doing great? Yeah, you're not allowed to do any of our Disney product or Marvel stuff anymore and sell it in the Artist Alley. If you're an official booth, we'll allow it, but you're not, so don't." And that happened like a few years back, and then it, they stopped trying to survey. If, if, if you go time. to a comic, if you go to a convention these days. 
and you go to, uh, there with the, the metal bikini Leia. Does yes. Disney just come out and grab you and drag you off because now they own you? <laughs> no, but they were. Tr- Disney is is a corporation that's greedy and only runs on money. We all know this. And they were they had this dumbass assumption. They still have it that artists are taking money away from them. It's like we're doing art of Disney characters that you don't even give two shits about. Like we're doing artwork of gargoyles. We're doing artwork of the princess and the frog because princess and the frog doesn't get a lot of love. We're doing artwork of Magira from Hercules. You know, we're doing artwork of the lesser Disney characters that no one does. And yet you think we're stealing money from you. And like, it just, Disney's greedy and yeah. <laughs> but after you sign Disney workers with little Disney hats, come in and break our legs and make us agree to their terms. <laughs> I, I used to do a joke with a friend of mine going, I want to dress up as a dark Sith Lord with giant Mickey Mouse ears, carrying de- cease and desist, you know, rolls of paper, and give them to every cosplayer who was cosplaying a Disney cop. Oh, Disney boy. Dumb Jordan says character. that they had a friend who made a video talking about it, and Disney claimed the video. Of what? Uh, this, this, Disney's little... Uh, copyright? Copyright stuff, specifically the stuff going on with Tumblr. Yeah... So, sorry about that, Decker. Well, if Disney decides to come around this and say, hey, this Live and Wired that you did, it infringes on our copyright. I'm the kind of guy to say, it's a fight him the whole damn way. And if they go to court with me, and I have to show this video to a jury to explain the three people here chatting it up, Disney claims that this is infringing on their copyright. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to win that case. Fun fact, my mom used to work at Disney. She has four shares of Disney stock. And my mom joked with me saying, Honey, if Disney's trying to claim you because I was a former worker of yours, punch them in the face. (laughs) (laughs) When I told her what happened, she was like, that's stupid. They don't own the concept of red, white, and blue in a circle. Yeah. But yeah, we have hit the three-hour mark. I know it doesn't feel like it because we spent the first ten minutes like, what the fuck is going on? Only five. Mm. Yeah, it's ten minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. Sixty-nine minutes. No, no, that's that's the bad number. You can't say that or you get the yellow dollar sign. Sorry. Mickey Mouse not minutes. That's when you get sued. <laughs> Lego. Wait, they might sue us. Uh, Legos used to Lego. people building stuff with their things. Yeah. They, they support it. I was going to say, uh, Nintendo. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's a bit, it's like, they've been getting better and worse in several ways. Remember when Rockstar used to attack a lot of YouTubers for copyright claim because they showed the cutscenes and then they were like, okay, you can do the video games, you just can't show any of the cutscenes. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, that's... That's the coming to the closing of the show in, which means it is timing for us to talk about what it is we have going on. Personally, I'm insane. You're always insane, Decker. Yes. The Your Decker theme song. Is Go ahead. I was gonna say, the theme song he always plays in it says, They're coming to take me away, ha ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho ha ha. Yeah, the funny, funny farm, farm where life is beautiful, beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha ha. Not my favorite song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you ever heard the metal cover of it? No. I think I've heard it a bit, but I kind of prefer the original. I know I, I'm, I'm, I'm metal, but I'm like, hey, it's, 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 it loses a lot of the. The whole yeah. point is the contrast. You don't have yes. contrast in the metal version. It's either the metal version or there's a rock version too that I have. I used to use it a lot for uh, whenever I did Joker artwork because they didn't copyright claim every, the music like they did the original song. Ah. So, Kat, what you got going on? Um, I just finished the thumbnail for uh, Musical Hell. She will be doing a review of the, uh, do you know the movie, The Thief and the Cobbler? Is this like a, like a peach cobbler? No. Shoe cobbler. You steal the peach cobbler? No. You steal some shoes? And some shoes. Thief and the Cobbler was a passion project made by a former Disney animator who regretfully passed, and Miramax was able to 
obtain his frames and everything, and they chopped it up. And mm -hmm. then the movie, which is the main lady is named Princess Yum Yum. And it was made, the, the art, the whole thing was made before Aladdin came out. But Aladdin knew of this project and used a lot of, Disney used a lot of that stuff. But Thief the Cobbler came out after Aladdin. So people think that it's a, it's a ripoff of Aladdin. When in reality, Aladdin took a bunch of stuff from that. My brain hurts, Decker. Uh, <laughs> I think I have a few game videos coming up sooner or later. I think. I don't know. I haven't kept track of anything. I've been working. Anyway. Help. <laughs> but Cat has been working a lot, so. Cat is dying inside and dealing with professionals and talking professional things about professional stuff, and I professionally hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate that I'm talking to professionals about professionally getting money. It's just doing professional talk to professional people and professional emails. Right. Oh, five dollars just got donated by from Linwood Wasp. Ross, I you. you a couple of months ago. My wife and I really enjoyed your reviews. Keep up the great work. Oh, thank you very much. You can buy a $5 taco. No, I can get that. $5 is an entire box from Taco Bell. It has a taco, a chalupa, a cheesy burrito, some uh, cinnamon twists, and a medium fountain drink. Oh, Andres Cauldron Sanchez. Uh, my channel... Now officially is in the description of Decker's streams. Took him five million of them. <laughs> yes. No, I had a, a bunch of my friends came and watched this to support me, and they're like, "Why aren't you? Why isn't your channel in this description?" And they messaged me every time for a while. I'm like, "Fine, I'll message." De I was like, "I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. I have to be polite." <laughs> so. And basically, uh, sorry. Yeah. The. Uh things going on with me. Next review is The Wizard of Speed and Time, which is uh, Take Dobby. Don't try and take my headphones. <laughs> Dobby, Lemon don't, juice. Don't steal my headphones. Dobby. Dobby. I'm innocent. I'm an innocent little creature of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby, stop that. Uh, Decker, a little advice. Cotton ball, lemon juice. Put lemon juice on the cotton ball. Rub your cords with it. Cats don't like the taste of citrus. Yeah, this, this cat, uh, Dobby. <laughs> Dobby, I understand you probably want to go out and eat your kibbles and you're trying to get my attention. That's fine. But you got my attention. We're almost on the show. Just, just hold your cat ass for a bit, okay? It's like having a little kid going, Dad, I want a glass of water. <laughs> so, uh, Wizard of Speed and Time reviews coming up. It's been taking a while, but I'm now feeling a little more inspired because I'm like, okay, if it's going to take this long, I am going to go all out. I am going to do, I'm going to get do my, get try my hand at doing a little more stop motion at this point in my life. See how it comes out. Should be fun. Uh, aside from that, uh, next Thursday, or this upcoming Thursday, I guess you would call it. Uh, Going to be doing more EDF Iron Rain with Creepy and 12378444 games. Mm. And they're doing pretty good in that, I think. Aside from yeah. several problems with the internet, but... Eh. Also, Creepy, would you be upset if I got myself a god-tier weapon and just went in and killed everything like... Ha! Well, I think you might take some of the fun out of it for me. Yeah. Because I've, I've, I've been playing on my own to go and collect the drones in the levels we've been on. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I killed enough storm ants to unlock the ability to purchase the double A rank assault rifle. Mm -hmm. And now I'm closing in on getting enough credits to actually buy the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that thing's like... Seven and a half times stronger than the gun I'm using right now and reloads in 0.1 seconds. <laughs> it's a nice looking Decker's gun. A, <laughs> Decker's a happy man. He is. But if I bring that in and just, like, the level starts, Sidorus drops down, I go, and just kill it. It's like, yay, that was a great fight we just had. It was real exciting. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. 
guns reminded me. Did you hear, Decker, that they're actually going to do a massive upgrade to Saints Row 2? Like, Saints they're Row fixing? Two? Yeah, they're doing, like, some fixes to it. Because they, they, they just came out with the Saints Row 3 remaster. Yeah. Well, I heard that, like, they're tr- working on updating sa- the Steam version of Saints Row 2. Like, they're going to fix some of the game-breaking bugs, I heard. And I know that's Gentlemen of the Row, they're actually working on a they're the big mod that helps get, r- fixes all those bugs. I know bugs they did do, recently patch the Steam version of Saints Row 2. Did they? I, they're working on fixing the multiplayer. Well, that'd be mm. nice. Because I'd like to play multiplayer with, in Saints Row 2 with someone! Yeah. Saints Row 2, is, Saints Row in general, is a game you play with a friend. I, 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 Saints Row 2 was my favorite Saints Row, so. It's a good Saints Row. It's really, I, I appreciate it. Right, everyone Saints likes Row. Saints Row 3, and it's like, that's when things got wacky and crazy, and it really came into its own. I'm like, yeah, but it was already wacky and crazy in 2. But yeah, it was, dude. It had the normal life to contrast it. Everything wasn't wacky and crazy, and the wacky and crazy parts were that much wackier and crazier. Yeah. <laughs> Though I do like the Dildo Bat in 3. Dildo Bat in 3 is nice. Yes. <laughs> Everybody remembers the dildo bat. And in Japan, it was censored, and it wasn't a big floppy dildo. It was one of those big stiff ones. They added a tentacle bat in uh, Saints Row 4. There, the dildo bat is actually in Saints Row 4 as well. It's hidden, and you can actually change the color to it to a very bright neon blue, and it's called the Manhattan style. <laughs> you get the reference? Okay. So, yeah, creepy. What you got going? I have uh, the new Batman review coming up I've been working on. Had a few delays on that, just some stuff that crops up. You know how it is. Just life. real life in the way. But I am still working on that. Uh, and after that will be Jim. Yay. But we're... Oh, great. More bright colors. But we're, we are inching ever closer. The reason why we're doing Gem next week is because we are inching ever closer to the end of Gem. And I know that Chibi Thulu and a lot of others are looking forward to it ending so that we can move on to Gargoyle. So, uh, but yeah, this Batman review is a special one because it features three characters, two in one episode and one in another, that... People have been asking for a very, very long time. Maybe thanks. You'll see. Okay. Ah, you gotta have the C to find out. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't give us the dirty details behind the scenes that much. Well, yeah, the Wizard of Speed and Time, like I was saying uh, earlier when John Masari was here, is up on YouTube. Like, the, the movie is there. Like, and it, you can find this 1979 original stop motion, like special effects showcase as well. Though that's not in as high of a quality as 480p, unfortunately. It's very hard to see when it's going really fast, which it does quite frequently. I mean, time is involved. You have to go fast. Speed <laughs> is involved. Speedy. Speedy. I am the wizard of speed and time. Do, 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 do. Anyway, anyway, thank you all for watching. I am Decker Shadow. I'm Kat Lunicia. And I'm that long-haired curvy guy. And remember... What the uh, hell was that Xbox show called? <laughs> oh, this is going to bother me again. Good night, everybody. Good night.